All right. I think we finally got it. I was hoping I'd be able to watch it from my laptop. But I don't think that's going to be possible. So there may not be any point in me having this laptop up here. Or I could turn on Team Viewer, I guess. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Hello. Let me just add something real quick. He's speed running. Here we go. <laughs> Speed run. Speed run? What are you talking about? You're, you're quickly doing stuff. Oh. There we go. 
Now we can see the same screen that's over there. It's like... We cheated. <laughs> Alright, there may not be anybody looking now, but this video is going to be saved. So, and probably edited later, maybe. Edited later. And put on uh, Facebook, or um, the tubes. The tubes. YouTubes. YouTube. <clears throat> So this is the SVO5 that I got from the giveaway. Uh, they've sent it to me. It came with a few holes in it for some reason. I've been pretty rough with it. It's got another hole in the side over here. But I think it's going to be fine. I opened it up last night just to peek. And I didn't really take anything out. So thank you, Sobel, for having the giveaway to give to uh, me and my family so we can enjoy it. We really appreciate it. Um, I made this plaque right here myself. They did not send me this. Um, I'm not being paid by Sobel in any way. They didn't hire me to do anything, um, regardless of what people think. I don't work for them, although my family was beginning to think that I did because of all <laughs> my posts on Facebook. So here it is. They're not responsible for anything I say or do, by the way. <laughs> so I don't represent them in any way, although I would like to. <laughs> so here we go. We'll get into it. Here's the unbox, unboxing of the Sobel SV05. I was very, very excited and happy and pleased to find out that I had won it. Who set this down over there for me, please? Let's move the spool out of the way. Let's see. Yeah, it comes with the magnetic bed and a glass bed it's actually packaged pretty well so even though it took uh, some abuse some abuse and a beating in the mail it looks to be fairly well protected inside of the box um, here's what the inside of it looks like after you take the top off of it Now we will grab, I don't even know what to grab next. I guess this is all one piece. Holy smokes. This thing is enormous. A lot bigger than the other printers. Oh, okay, this is one piece. Here, hold on to that for me. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Here's one of the arms that hold the bed up. Here's a non-static bag with something in it. I'm assuming this is probably the display. So, well, if you see this, please give us a touch screen <laughs> with these. would be nice. Although I've been wanting to use these displays because I see them on a lot of machines and I've never used them. Um, it's very simple. I'm just going to... I'm glad they didn't make a back with this because I can just print one up and make one myself to cover up this board uh, there's no really high voltage or anything that goes to it so i think you're pretty safe to be around it um and don't see any way to flash or upgrade these screens i guess you can't maybe that's only the touch screens because there's no sd card slot or mini sd on these but that's fine i'm sure it could be upgraded with a touch screen if i really wanted to which i don't really mind there's that. Now we have a box inside of our box. <laughs> no idea. This, what is this? this is, oh, this is the board. This will be the Creality 4.2.2, I think, which is the same that's in my Ender 3 V2, I believe. Oh, uh, okay. Hopefully I don't damage this because then it's on recording that I damaged it. And then you can't get another free one. And then you guys will have to send me another free one. Um, <laughs> let's hold that. This has to be held up too, actually. You just put your arm out like right here. Just for a second till I move this box out of the way. Then I'll grab it from you and set it on the table. 
We'll just have to move this down here. All right. Move this precious thing over here. Precious thing. I don't know what part this is yet, but that we will figure like it the, out. The it looks like top. the gantry. I bet you this. Yeah. The, okay. This is the top. I guess I don't really have a gantry. Well, it, does, <clears> it just doesn't move up and down. Let's see what else we got. We got some foam. Nice and black like the rest of the foam. Awesome. Uh, we have another box. This is probably the toolbox, I assume. A box inside of the box. Yeah, the toolbox. Yep. There's some filament. Wow. Thanks, guys. What am I going <laughs> to test print with this? <laughs> I guess that's why you get the budget version. Only two ninety nine for this, which I think is a very good deal. Um... The wife was probably going to kill me, but I was thinking about buying one anyways. Although I want the iDex to be my new printer, the Sobel SV04. I think they uh, look amazing. It would be nice to not have to print a prime tower. So inside of the box, we got bed clips. These are way too big for bed clips. I will not be using those. I'll probably be using the magnetic bed first. There's some screws. These are the M530s, M410s, and a, cre a Creality cover. That's probably for the CR Touch, I think it comes with. I will just leave all this stuff in this little box till we get to it. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Next, we have some aluminum. This goes for $2.50 a pound right now. Actually, I don't know what it goes for. <laughs> Abby, if you would um, maybe start unwrapping that, you can use this to cut the plastic off of it. Try not to hit the metal part, though. That's ceramic, and it'll probably scratch it if it does. Here's the power supply. Let's see what kind of power supply they got with this. I was assuming it was the mean well, but I kind of heard that it was the new Creality power supply. It looks like the mean well, but it doesn't say mean well. So I think it may actually be the new, the one that uh, Creality just came out with. That's what I had heard anyways. I don't know. But I think it's probably a nice one anyway. Meanwhile, well makes a good one. Here's the other arm for the bed. And last but not least, we have another piece of aluminum. Now, supposedly, all this aluminum will build us a square. Stroke. So that we can... Start printing at faster speeds, you get more stability with a cubic structure. That's what the internet tells me, I don't know. <laughs> I've never had one, so let's move this down here out of the way. Hey, how's your head coming with that, that I'm being plastic strong. over there? Hold on just a second, let me get you something a little easier. Um strong guys. I'm strong. Here we go. Use this. Don't keep pulling on it. Just be very careful and don't, don't scratch it. And don't hurt yourself. That's for sure. Here, go ahead and cut on that. But not me. Go ahead. Go right there. Boy, they really wrapped this thing up good. So it wouldn't break or anything. All right. That was totally easy. <laughs> I don't know about that. 
<laughs> All right, there's <clears throat> one. Little two. Two. Little three little Indians. Another two. They definitely made sure it wasn't going to get scratched up during the shipping process. For three tubes, I can't count. There we go. Now we've got it all opened. Four tubes. All right. About time for the setup. Hand me that box knife right there. Box? Or Well, the other box knife. That is a box knife, but not the one I needed. <laughs> We're going to get this book off of here. Because this has... The instructions. Hopefully. I heard that there was something that came... I can't remember. I was watching a video on something that came out. And, and they said, sorry, we don't have a booklet to help you install it. It's a new product we released, and we don't haven't made a manual yet. I said, oh... Maybe that was this printer, actually. I don't know. It's sticky. That stuff leaves sticky residue. Don't use that stuff. I hope that's not what's stuck to the glass. Anyways, printer manual. This definitely has parts left, pre-assembly, checklist, assembly. is On page five. Yep, we have all that, I'm pretty sure. Yep, that looks good. Step one, list one. They want us to start with this piece. So we are going to get all this stuff out of the way. You've seen what it all comes with. I think we're going to need, uh, it says right here. We're going to need parts. This is one that goes in the back, I think. No. <laughs> And they all look the same. Let me get this other stuff out of the way well, first. One see, of we're them. We're gonna need the. One of them has dots. Like it wants us to start with that. That's the bottom. That's right. This is the top. <laughs> look at this. Dual shaft, y-axis. Yes, thank you. And walk this over here to this box. Put that in a safe spot for now. Away from us. Because we are not safe. Which, by the way, guys, if you ever thought about getting the SVO2, I highly suggest it. I've made my own. I still know you guys saw posts of me doing these and stuff. Here's, uh, I made my own poker chip set. They look absolutely amazing. I used this gold filament here. Um, this one thing I did not like about the SVO2 is you got to have a prime tower, so that's just wasted filament. But uh, they look absolutely amazing. Um, here's a gold one with that dolphin material that you guys seen that dolphin that I made. That, that's what I did the inlays with this clear blue sparkly. But anyway, I got a whole set of these. These look really nice. I'm gonna be printing more actually. They got that good sound too, you know, like kind of like uh, clay okay. chips. So, anyway, let me get these out of the way here. <laughs> All right. That was a monster from Stranger Things. And that has a picture. I like to I like to build stuff by pictures mostly. That okay. shows the picture of it like this okay this thing is facing me and then the three dots and then uh two dots two dots yeah they look like they're closer to the bottom because these parts aren't really labeled I don't it shows really that there's that. a whole Two holes right here. Yep. So that one will go on this corner. And all I these are the same. These are all the same. Yeah. 
Yeah, those are all just blanks, so I don't think these really matter where they go. If they do, please send me an alert or something. May or somebody. So that will go. This uses the... What screws? M5. Where's our little tool? M5. That's an M4. Oops. Here's M520s. I believe yes. that's what it said. M5 by 25. Yeah, we got another one of those. Where's the M5 by 25? This is M5 by 20. M5 by 25. Here Sorry. we go. I think there's 25 of them in here is what it's saying. Sorry, but I need eight of them. So we'll get eight of these out. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh. Two, four, six, eight. I dropped too many. Oh, yeah, another scraper. I don't have ten of these already. I do now. Well, Another, my Solval SVO 2 8, my SD card. That was tragic. <laughs> and then we need, okay, we got those. All right. Yep, they are the exact same. Looks like we'll take two of these. They'll go right here. But how do we screw them on? With this, but let's get our tools out first. Which will be in here, I believe. Oh, yay. Some more clippers, too. <laughs> that was so much enthusiasm. By the way, if you guys are watching this, you don't have to watch it all. If you're bored, just shut it off. You can rewind it. It is rewindable. I set that option on so you can go back and skip to your parts you may want to see or whatever. Or may not see. Clippers. And do whatever you want. Alright. Good which, quality clippers. Which one of these? Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Don't use them for gardening, please. Gardening? They're clippers. You can use them for like to clip like clippers. Yeah, you can use them for gardening. <laughs> It's actually a good idea no, but the, the, for clipping little saplings to grow more. Alright. Looks like this is facing inwards. We'll start with this other corner first, actually. It's the weirdest one. The oddest of the flavors. I think it shows it facing outwards, or is it just showing us that it's got holes in it? Eh, we'll just do it this way. Uh, if it's wrong, we'll fix it. It doesn't break it. Just makes it look weird. All right, I'm going to hold this off the edge of the table a little bit. So it's get underneath fine. it. You always say it's fine. It could be broken in 10 pieces. You'll be like, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's it not is. reassuring. Look, it's literally fine. It's not scratched. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> of course it is. All right, I know there's a hole over here somewhere. Hey, sisters. All right. I think I stripped it. It's fine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, oh, shoot. Give me that. It's not stripped. These screwdrivers are so hard to use. I should have bought me a, a set with handles. Now, are we... Not supposed to tighten these all the way like you do with the other printers. It always says don't tighten them all the way till you get them all set up. Now I'm tightening them. You have to redo this whole thing. Yeah, 
They make it look so easy in their build videos. They're done in like eight, ten minutes. We can't just skip like that. Keep the front of the base facing you. Just the front. That's the front. No, nope, this is the front. That's the front. Yeah. This picture, see this little thing is over here. What is that? That come off? No. Nope. Does it? No. Nope. <laughs> Anyways. That's made of plastic right there. I wonder what that is. Um, let's see. Take one of the vertical frame pieces and place it in the corner of the base frame on top of the frame. Lined up with the corner. Notice the hole at the top piece facing left and right. Confusion. <laughs> huh? Nothing. Oh, it's talking about these holes. Although... That goes all the way through it. So what does it mean left and right? Is there one that only has it on the left and one that only has it on the right? Or I think it's just saying make sure these are facing upwards where the holes are. That's a good piece of information. They all have holes in the top. Okay, that's fine. That works. And do those have washers on them? Oh well. Let's do these ones now. Put this one in the back here with the hole facing <laughs> upwards, hopefully. Like this. <laughs> Yeah, you just come over here. I'll just turn the frame a little bit. How about that? Okay. All right, now let it off the side of the table a little bit for me, please, my lovely assistant. <laughs> I'm an assistant, guys. Yeah. We created you for this day. I just wanted to put this printer together, and it took me 12 years to grow you into this moment. Took a lot of mac and cheese, that's for sure. What's your favorite thing to eat? Food. Pretty good choice. <laughs> I guess that's better than rocks. Some rocks look delicious, though. <laughs> All right. A little magical finger spin. I'm assuming my wife would have tried to call us by now if her sound wasn't working. So I hope it's working. I hope I'm not doing all this for nothing. And if it didn't work, we're not tearing it down to do it again. Because I've been ha I've had this thing since yesterday. And I've been dying to get it together. Then I had sound issues. Video issues. Video issues. I didn't want to have to buy streaming software to use my phone as a webcam because I won't be using it all the time. Where does this go? What did this say? That is just looks like, like it would go like this. Yeah, it's just like all of the other ones. Hmm. I didn't know you knew how to put this together. Maybe you should do this. <laughs> Wait a second. What? What? That's how it goes. I'm confused. Because this is over here. So this is this arm right here. And you have the flat fart. Flat fart. You got the flat fart facing you. Flat part facing you right there. See? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Totally. I totally get it. Need electric drill. You need an electric drill. Don't we have one? Yeah, but that's really you shouldn't use it on stuff like this. You, <laughs> you would just over tighten it and strip it and you gotta be delicate when you're tightening aluminum with screws because you can strip the threads out and then you'll start complaining. 
I'm sure there's people out there that do that, and then they contact the company and say, you sold me a defective unit. Like, no, you over-tightened it and ruined it. Oh, I basically don't use any work. See, it looks like somebody had put this together before. Maybe that's just where it's machined. If you look in here, well, I guess that could have been cleaned up a little better um, in the factory. But if you look right in here, maybe they could have hit that with a brush, or maybe it's just been put together before. I don't know. But uh, not a big deal, if you ask me. Like I said, three ninety or two ninety nine. You get a little bit of extra aluminum with it too. Yay! Yeah. All right, guys. Look, it's getting there, huh? It's starting to look like a square. It's what I wanted. Next, we're gonna have to do all the electronics. No. Oh, that's what this is for. This is where the electronics go. All the wiring and junk jazz. Oh, man. Was that supposed to come off beforehand or you just slide it back and forth? Maybe you just... Ooh, that right. Slide's good. You know what, though? Watch this. My wife knows what I'm looking for. Where's my slickery grease? Yeah, I guess I'll look for it later. I don't know. This place is a mess ever since I got a 3D printer. I knocked it down. Oh, here we go, huh? You guys ever find, you guys should go on Amazon. And if you want lube for like your Z screws or anything like that, this stuff is the best right here. Multi-purpose synthetic grease called Super Lube. Looks like it's from the 1970s, but it's amazing. You hear this? Probably not. But you definitely, <laughs> yeah, listen to this. Hear that friction? Now watch this. Put a little bit of this super lube on it. Get this greased up nice and, whoops, slickery. I don't know, we can't really get the other side, so I don't know how well this is going to work. May not work at all, I don't know. It's always best to have less friction on your 3D printer, no matter what part it is. I put this on everything. Eggs won't stick to the pan or nothing with this. I'm just kidding. Don't eat it. Come on. I think I can't get it all the way off of there. So, Oh, well, moving on. It feels a little bit slicker. Although you can't really tell by the sound, it, de it definitely moves easier. Anyway, this stuff's really good for the metal Z screws and stuff to uh, keep them lubed up so they don't lock up on you. That's the last thing you want is for your Z screw to lock up on you. It's not pretty. It'll bend, and then you got to replace it, and it might damage other stuff too. It's that screw right there in the middle. All right, let's put this arm on here. Hold this off the side of the bed for me, please. Dunka Shane. I don't know what that means. It means thank you. In German? Yeah, that's is good. Das I don't know German. Ich komme aus Amerikan. Und du, where kommst du? Meine Freunde. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know German. I don't know a lot. But I know a little bit after living there for seven years. All I know is French. Yeah? Yeah. How do you say toast? I don't know the whole thing of French. I do. French toast. Oh. See? <sighs> <laughs> Which reminds me, my sister just got back from Paris a couple weeks ago. She got engaged in Paris. And she didn't take me? At the Eiffel Tower. Woo! Engagement! <gasps> With Wes? What? With Wes? Yes. <gasps> you didn't oh know she God. got engaged uh -uh. to Wes? Yeah. 
Yeah, they're going to get married. Isn't that crazy? I want to be the bridesmaid. <laughs> Isn't that crazy, though? Wait, no, not the bridesmaid. That's a long thing. They've been Flower together girl. how long? Five, six years? However long. And they're finally getting married. There goes their life. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. We have our cube here. <laughs> Our cube and our sticky manual. So, well, don't put that stickers around this stuff. That's 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 just not kosher. Nobody likes a sticky manual. <laughs> Although this may have been one that they were using. I don't know. Maybe printing on, and they just send it to me afterwards. I don't know. Um, that sticky part just looks weird. I don't know. Weird. Anyways, moving on. We got step one done. Only 16 more to go. Just kidding. I don't think there's that many steps. There's not even that many pages in here. That's one thing I like about Sobel. I, when I got my Ender 3 V2, it took – my wife put it together. took her like an hour and a half or two hours or something. And then I thought it was wrong. So I tore it all apart. And then it took us another hour, hour and a half or two hours, whatever, to get it back together. Um, it just didn't feel right at first. So we took it apart and did it again. So I mean, it took a total of like five hours before we could even get that thing going. When I got my SVO2, I had that thing up and running in 20 minutes. It, it was, was very pieces. easy. It was very, very easy. I can understand why this isn't in three pieces. It's hard to ship a square unless you just put a box around it and stuff it with styrofoam. But <laughs> All right. Next step two. <gasps> the top. Take your daughter and drop her off at the orphanage. What? What book is this? I'm no. Just <laughs> I'm just kidding. We gotta put the top on there now. Yay. Is this upside down? No. Yay. Um, looks like we'll be using eight more of the M5 by 25s. Where did those go? They went in the box. Uh, did I put them back in the box? Yeah. Hopefully. I sure did. See, that's why I brought you. Hey, well, that's why I had you 12 years ago. Well, Dad, I walked home from school. I knew I was going to forget these. Okay. You walked home from school? Yes. No, from the bus stop. Four. Good. So there's eight in here. So apparently these M25 by 20 or M5 by 25s. We're given to us just for the top and bottom of the outer frame here. Um, looks like we will just slammer, not slammer, put her on there. Um, but it has this box. So what does it say to do with this box? Next the box. Wiring duct. Okay. Well, let's see what to do next. Grab this top. It's going to go like... Well, yes, sir. well, this don't make sense. What were raggy? He's confused. Well, because it shows the belt tensioner. I'm pretty sure it goes like this. He's pretty sure it goes. Oh, I've got it upside down. He has it upside <laughs> down. He... Can't concentrate. Here we go. Yay! Here, Abby. I need you to hold this. This is the only awkward part about this cubic structure. Is uh, you kind of need two people to do this. I don't know. I mean, you could do it alone, I guess. Is this it, right? It would just be hard. No. Because the little... The... Oh, yeah, it is. this is... Wait a minute. Dad, this... Let's look at the book. That the hot end's upside down. That ain't right. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So this probably goes in the back. Excuse me, chandelier. Excuse me. Probably goes like these. Yeah, that looks good because it's the front. Look at... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See? That's why I had you 12 years ago. You can't... For this moment right here. We, like... we have so many good moments. Look at this. La, da, da. 
Is this core XY? Whoa. This is working like a Core XY machine. This is weird. I don't think. Is this belt? It's not Core XY. It's weird. I thought these belts were supposed to move. Okay, yeah, it's not because this would be moving too if I moved it. That's right. I don't know. Something was just freaking me out there for a second. All right. Look at this fan, though. This beefy tornado fan up front. That thing looks solid. Um, this little fans on the side here, they're really small, but they look like they're built pretty dang well. You got your CR touch on the side. I'm so glad to see that. I think it's a lot better than the BL touch um, that I have on my SVO2. I wasn't sure if the SVO2 could use the CR touch. I later found out that you could, um, but um, I had already gotten the BL touch, so that's what I have on it now. It does work okay. You've seen the prints. The prints come out really nice. So, All right. Here we go, Abby. I need you. More than anyone, darling. Okay. I know I love Doritos from the start. All right, it looks like, look, we got one that goes in the top and one that goes in the side. That's why they wanted us to make sure the holes are at the top for the D-screw. Uh-huh. All right? So mm -hmm. twist those in with your fingers. No, twist but with your fingers, not touch. Twist. And then we'll tighten it down with the screwdriver. This is actually really simple, guys. Um, it lines up perfectly. Sorry if my hands are dirty. I just got off of work and I had to go help my son. He got a flat tire. He was trying to use the tire jack when I went out there that went to uh, his car. And it looked really janky. And I was scared he was going to kill himself with it. So... I took him the good tire jack and helped him change his tire. And then I got grease all over my hands. And now I'm building a printer. We are building a printer. Yes, yes, yes. In that hole. This thing looks so nice. I am so excited. Oh, I, lo I love this. Direct drive. It's just. It's just and it's going to go up. It's not a. Down. All, it's not. Looks like the gear is not metal, which I don't know if they are on direct drives, but it does look like it is all metal. Um, I think that was part of the features it had was all metal direct drive extruder, um, which does look like it is except for the gear. That doesn't work. Uh, no, I have the screwdriver. Okay. This is not lined up. Or something it's not going in did you get it yeah. all right let me tighten it down I'm gonna get a certain amount of pressure here but this one's not going in so I want to look at it first I don't like how hard that is to go in there but it is going in maybe they just didn't machine that it's hitting easier a little bit so maybe it just didn't get machined out extremely well, which it's getting a lot easier. It's not easy enough that you can spin it with one hand, as I would hope and wish. But uh, it's good. It's good. And this one goes in good. Good. That's a pizza. Oh, was I supposed to do the side too? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. That's all right. But I had 12 years to teach you that. Uh. And I missed it. I know I'm not really tightening these down. I know I'm making some faces like I'm just really putting some grease, elbow grease into it. But I'm not. I know this one does go down further. This one is scaring me. It doesn't want to go in. 
Oh, which one? This one? I'll show it who's boss. Just like this. This one I do. That's right. We'll get it. See, this is actually pretty easy. I think it's just where they machined it out. There's a little bit of shavings in there. Maybe, you know, they didn't uh, make sure they got all of the shavings and stuff out and smooth it out, which is fine. Don't really care. I don't mind extra metal shavings in there, actually, because the metal shavings get in there with the threads and it makes it stay tight. It works like a Loctite. So, doesn't bother me none. I just, I know this thing's good. Not my sign. I caught it. <laughs> I'm cool. I love this little sign. I made it for myself, though. Um, and I wrote, thank you, Sol all Solville staff at the bottom. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. We love you. We sure do. I love Solville brand. I love everything that they've made. They have a laser engraver. They have the SVO1, the SVO1 Pro. Um, the SVO2, which I have, the color. SVO3, which is, uh, I think that one's the large um, print bed printer. It's really large. I think it's a 350 by 350 by 400, maybe, or maybe another 350. I can't remember exactly. I'm not really interested in that one as much. Um, and then... They have the SVO4, which is the IDEX. That's the one that I really want. I wished, had I thought a little more about it, it kind of got scared off because people were online were like, oh, but you can't auto level the second nozzle. You got to do it manually. And then, and I was like, oh no, this is the second printer I've ever gotten. I don't want to have to manually level a nozzle. So I didn't get it. I ended up getting the SVO2, even though I knew I was going to have to have a prime tower. Um, but I'm, I, I do love the SVO2. Um, it's, it's got a good size bed on it. I think it's, it's really a 280 good. by 240 by 300. It works great. Uh, at first, I had some problems with it. I just didn't know what I was doing. Once I figured it out, I got it going real good. The only problem that I do still have with it is when you look at the Z offset settings while you're printing, you're supposed to be able to adjust it live. I cannot. I cannot get mine to stop saying it's negative 27 um, millimeters, which doesn't make any sense. It should only be saying like negative 1.6. I took my micrometer and I measured it. It's around 1.6 to 1.8 uh, from the nozzle uh, or down the nozzle to the bed for the uh, Z offset from zero but it won't it won't let me change it it won't let me fix it i've tried re reinstalling firmware um i don't know if solo ever plans on fixing that issue i know other people have the same issue it's not been fixed as far as i know i would love for it to because i would love to be able to live update and i think that's only with the bl touch firmware it's not with the original firmware where you manually level your bed every time I believe it still works that way. It just does not with the BL Touch firmware, which is a shame. But uh, it doesn't affect my prints. I just can't change the Z offset while I'm printing. And also when you are setting the Z offset, it doesn't show you what you're setting it to when you're getting ready to level the bed. And when you're doing the manual leveling and you press the up or down to move it 0 0.01 millimeters, or 0.1, whichever one it is, it doesn't show you how far it is. That's kind of odd to me, but like I said, it doesn't affect the quality, so I haven't worried about it too much. Don't really care. Um, let's see what step three is. Install chassis, 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 chassis. Something. Here, boy. Chassis. <laughs> All right. Corner brackets, limit switch. I've seen where somebody has fell out on one of these. They got it back in. They just squeeze and they, they pop right in. Mine did not fall out, so I know. I'm good. This says uh, there's supposed to be screws going in the front, too, right here. I think this is where... 
Yes, yes, yes. I see, I see. We need the little clipper dippers there, honey bumpkin. And we're going to have you clip off this little I get to tidy clip whitey. It. Yeah. This little guy right here. Wish I could save that. Let me, hold on. Hold, push down in here and try to push that little thing backwards. And I'll see if I can just, nope. Just clip it off. I'm just going to do it. I like to try to save these if I can. They become very precious after you do lots of mods. Clip it up close to right here. Up to right here. And uh, don't clip the wire. I'm trying. It's a good start. You've got it. A nanometer. All right. Before you stab me, just give me this. <laughs> There we go. And done. Bro. <laughs> have, you, have you do something a little less dangerous next time while you're pointing it at me and pushing, <laughs> waiting for it to slip and stab me in the gully watts. All right, let's see here. This is where the SD card goes in right here. So this is going to mount right cheer. Yes, yes. I believe up underneath. Oh, okay. Here's a um, T nut. A nut. That will go up into the frame, I believe, up under. Oh, shnikes. I bet you a million buckaroonies. That we messed up? That it wants us to run all this wiring. Surely not. Does this come off? Is this supposed to come off? Does this come off? Silval? May Young? May Young, we're calling for you. Does this come off? Dad. That's upside down. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I feel like those wires are supposed to go in here. Does this come off? This right here? I feel like... It doesn't feel like it comes off. It doesn't say take it off. It just says, hey, there's a wiring duct there. Should I... Like, should I, I know. Should I message me, Young? Um, No. Let's just read what it says. Keep the front of the machine facing you. Take out the chassis from the right, print it and print it on the inside. Keep the wire. Keep the wire outside the printer. Manage the wire along the right profile of the printer. And then open the wiring duct and put the wires in the wiring duct and install the chassis on top. Or on the front 2020 profile of the printer. Lock the chassis with the whatever. Hello and welcome. Then we close the wiring. We don't know what Well, to this do. is odd. There's no oh. period at the end of this sentence and I if it didn't finish the sentence. It says right here. Oh, there it is. It's down there. That's why. <laughs> That's odd. Close the wiring duct. <laughs> All right. Y'all need to hire me to check the camera and stuff on here. So it is saying that this is supposed to open somehow. Pull it. I don't know if it's telling me to take this off and open it and do it. Let me go look it up on the computer real quick. I'll be right back. I'm going to look at their install video. I think Roger or Rodney or whatever his name is had done it on YouTube. His little install video. So will SVO5. Let's see what he does.
Hello everyone. Hi everyone. How are you doing today? I'm the one and only assistant. You should, Michael. You should really check out the SVO2. Um, the only problem I had was that Z offset. Although, like I said, it's not a deal breaker for me, anyways. Um, I still love it. Okay, so he tilted it and installed these screws and the T-nut. He hasn't done anything with the wiring duct yet. He has all these wires hanging out the outside though. When does he deal with the wiring duct? When? When? They're still all hanging out. He has power supply on. Okay, right here. He plugs in that. And he just pulls it off. Such a strong man. All right. R.I.P. Oh, you killed the camera. That's I'm why you sorry. shouldn't be near it or messing with it. It's fine. <laughs> of course it is. Like, I didn't know that was the next thing out of your mouth. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, with your Oculus box. His charging block. Um, it's plugged into my thing right now. I'm using it. All right. Sorry. There's a broken back there. You just have to return it once. I think mine is plugged into the side of my bed if you want to go get it. You can just use it. Hold this for me, please. Let's get this in here. He, did, he did something like this. It looked like this, kind of. All right, where's that screwdriver? Did you really lose the screwdriver? Yes. Okay. Nope, I left it safe with you. <laughs> That's not the right size. This one? Yes, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Slide forward. I think it's this. What? I thought that was in there. Hold it like that. Now there's two more screws. You go get that manual. I've left it over there on my desk, my computer desk, please. Let's see what it said, what screws it says. There's probably only two in a little baggie over here, anyways. Ah. Ah. That's great. This is the M5. <laughs> Or M4 by 20s. M4 by 20. Right here. There. Oh, never mind. I got it. One handed. Look at that. I literally could just use this hand. Bam. Show up. Excuse me. Oh, God. This part's a little difficult. Especially if you're not trying to use the right hex nut screwdriver. I don't know why there has to be so many different sizes. There we go. Now, right here, you can use the old 
some twisty trick. But I'm not going to. <laughs> because it's difficult to hold up anyways. Alright, that one's in there. Now we need a different screwdriver to put the same piece on right here. Now that one's in there. This hex nut is not, or this T nut is not twisting. Make it twist. Like it's supposed to when it's in there, though, which is weird. It's supposed to twist when you tighten it. Ball. And it's not. That doesn't make sense. That's basically pointless. Yeah, that makes no sense at all whatsoever. Like, this is just a pointless T-nut because it's not twisting. And I know it's the right one. It was the one that was already with it. Ha! Got it. Whoop, whoop. <clears throat> this one goes in the front right here. On the other side. On the other side. Welcome to the other side. I don't know the sound. <laughs> That's tight. That's tight. Now, we'll set this down. Slowly. Man, it's a solid body. Let me tell you. I could build a printer on this. It's so solid. It's not even shaking. The whole table shaking. Yes, this thing is solid. I like these little clicks, these little switches. Can I make. it? Oh, new fidget toy. Alrighty then. I don't know what it's for. Now there's little... There's little, um... Doodads. You got these little covers that go on there if you want to cover up the holes. We'll do that later. I'm not really worried about that right now. We don't need them. Because we're cool like that. Um, this is what it was saying about letting the wires hang out, I think, just to pull this to the outside. But we're going to need to use these. I think we will go ahead and take this off because it looked a little difficult in the video. Oh, there you it's go. like rubber. Now I can put some lube on it. <laughs> um. I put this stuff on everything just to make it not have friction. That works. We'll just set that aside for now. <laughs> uh, these wires will go nice and neat, neatly inside. Of here I don't think that's neat. to keep them out of the way eventually anyways I think these will connect up to the power supply and stuff like that and then that I don't know we'll find out I he's guess. being Next aggressive step. let's not lose these screws next step um, we got all that part done step four there's only uh, let's see nine steps, and we're all we're halfway through almost. All right, the Z-axis frame assembly. 
which is this part over here with the Z screw. We need the M5 by 30s. There's four of those, which is probably, nope, remember M410s? Here they are, M5 by 30s. Let's get this. Where are those two screws that were left here? Okay, I got them safe right here. Those are the M5 by 25s, or uh, M420s. That's what these were. I'll put those in there. I'm going to keep those over there. So I'm sure we will need them eventually. M420, yep, I only use two of them there. All right. Step one of step four. That's what it says. Here's step four. Step one A. Step one A of step four. Preparing the following parts. Z axis frame C. Dort van. Which means Dort over there. Um, and that will go just like you're holding it, I believe. You'll need M5 by 30 socket screws, which is four of those right there. M5 washer. It doesn't go like this? No, please don't do that. Um, okay. There should be some washer somewhere. Maybe the washer's already come with it. Maybe the washers are already on it. There's those little plug things. Yeah, because there's not a bag of washers. So it must be talking about the washers that are already on there. There's some things on here. No, I'm talking about on these screws. There's some on there already. Oh. Uh, so, and then a 5 millimeter Allen key, which I, I like the Allen wrenches on the Solval SVO2 better. Let me show you what they look like. They really gave us some good ones with the Solval SVO2. Um, they had these little rounded edges so you can get them at an angle really well, whereas these are just flat, which is how my Creality one was. Clippers. All right, so <laughs> we'll need these screws. I think this hex wrench. Which will go straight up and down like you have it there. It says move this forward out of the way. And use the M530s. Is these M five thirties to attach it? To the frame. Two of these. All right. It just goes in here. All right, we're done. Ready to print? Woohoo! <laughs> we still need to put the bed on it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm going to go put on my Crocs. That looks nice. Very nice. Which wrench was it? This one? Probably not. This one? Ding, ding, ding. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Chicken dinner. Little thumb trick. I can never do it right. They always make it look easy in that video. They must have done this a thousand times. For me, not so, <laughs> so much. <laughs> All right. Put 
this up here. Yeah, he kind of woke up the whole house whenever he found out that he won. He was, he was like screaming, jumping up and down and all that stuff. <laughs> I was sick at that time. Yeah, but you were in a good mood. Kind of. When you heard that we were getting the Lamborghini of cubic structure, <laughs> even though it's not Quirks Y, it's still, it's still very nice. What are you, an elephant? <laughs> You're so mean. Oh my god, we have two viewers. We're so cute. Yeah, one's probably mom. <laughs> It'll be a video that people can go back and watch if they want, or skip through to the parts that they need to see. Which will probably be the test print that they want to see. Everything else they'll probably just skip. All right. That is solid as a Brick. unriped watermelon. Are, I don't, are they solid? I, I don't know. A brick, Dad. Yeah. Solid as a brick. Yeah, those can be. Uh... All right. Keep the front facing you. Put another An unriped by watermelon. 30. That doesn't make sense. On the bottoms. Bottoms, what? On the bottoms. On the bottoms. What about the bottoms? More screws. Oh. I know. I, I the so the SVO two. I got spoiled with the SVO two because it was just so easy. I all solo printers are gonna be that easy. It has taken us an hour, an hour and twenty minutes. Well, it wouldn't normally take that long, I'm sure, but we've been taking our sweet time, enjoying our lovely family time together while we build our new home. That sounds good, right? I mean, <laughs> um... We can build a home with this. Take us 10 years. Not really. I don't know if that's supposed to touch or if that's supposed to sit on top. It's kind of freaking me out here. Back to the video. All right, let's go look at the video. See what the video says. What'd you do here, Rodney? Are you the guy building it? Are you the man behind the mask? Behind Dream's Is it mask? sitting on top of it? Thank you, Alan. I really appreciate that. I really do. I, was, I am very lucky, and I'm very thankful that uh, they chose me. I, um, I worked very hard on advertising. I had... A bunch of entries a bunch of entries i came home from a camping weekend camping trip just to turn in entries yeah so his looks like it's sitting on top right there so i've got to loosen these screws so i i tried to unscrew it with my vape so i oh, that's not the right one. Oh no where did I put it? Right here, along with the manual. All right, so we're going to have to loosen this up a little bit here. Maybe do the bottom ones first. Can you even hold this? Make sure it doesn't go flying. I don't want it to turn into an airplane. Although, actually, that would be pretty cool. Oh, uh, not really. So there's... Looks like it's... That's not going flush. Let me take these out. 
more at least. Right after I got the thumb trick down. Then I gotta unscrew it. R.I.P. We have to redo it. Well, just this part. Uh, there it goes. Sorry. You, me. you all right? Yeah. Sorry. Um, they didn't put a pinch warning on there. <laughs> <laughs> These things are machined to the very edge. The very, very edge. I feel like they could have maybe made this part a little bit longer. Like, there's room, maybe. I mean, there. it looks like there is. I don't know what else is going on in this thing just yet. But they could have made this bar a little bit longer. Although maybe they didn't need to. I guess when you're building thousands of them, it saves you a little bit of money to not build the extra length on there. Now, they're supposed to... Aha! Uh, Ouch! <laughs> We have a we have a chandelier. We have a chandelier up there. Can you not see it in the camera? No. And uh he just he just hit his head on it. <clears throat> fail. That was a fail. <sighs> that screw's not going in. Maybe I gotta unscrew these again. Maybe I got these two tied again. Uh... <laughs> I really need a faster screwdriver. Excuse me. You are excused. This is a no edit video. Oh, no I edit. need you to come hold this while I try to put these other screws in. Oh. Like you'll probably stand over here. Okay. Bye Going to the ninja. Yeah, I need you to do a little parkour. Parkour. There it is. Okay. That's what it is. So, yeah, don't grab those. I don't want those to bend. Just kind of push that way on it a little bit. Just hold it right there. They're so cool, guys. You push it over a little bit more if you can towards you. There you go. That's exactly what I needed. That was the space I needed. All right, now there should be another one of these screws right here. And it should be in line. It should be. And let's hope it is. We're going to say it is. Yep. And it is. Can you hold this up a little bit? Just like right there or something. So I can twist this thing without any limitations. I am going to make you a new hat. A new hat? Why would I need a hat? I don't know. But 3D, I can. 3D. I'm that guy at work that I'm always like, somebody's like, yeah, I need that blah, blah, blah. Like, I'll print you one. 20 bucks. It's always 20 bucks. What you need? 20 bucks. Because $20 would buy me a new roll of filament. See, I'll do anything. That doesn't use at least a half a roll of filament. If you buy me a whole roll, <laughs> I'll print you whatever you want. I just keep the rest. It's always twenty bucks. Paid off my. I got enough money back for my first printer already. I sold that monster sign for thirty dollars that I made with the SVO two. And he was happy to pay it. Really happy to pay it. He loved it. Thought it was gorgeous. I drilled holes in the back of it so he could put LEDs behind it that are in a chase pattern. And it would flash through the piece um, chasing each other. So it looked really cool. It was a really cool effect. It's kind of hard to explain, but it was awesome.
And then after this, aren't we gonna like do a print? Yes. Is that even on there all the way? It don't look like it. It's not flush. Do you think we should print a slug? A slug? You know, like one of those fidget slugs? What the heck is a fidget slug? You know, like... Guys, help me. You You're know, talking like, about the flexi slug? Like, yeah. From Flexi Factory? No. I think? Yeah, I think you are. I am a flexi authorized dealer for your information i have a seller badge i think it's in your room you were painting it for yeah, me I'm painting. but yeah it, it's like it's like this hand except it's a slug it's like the hand except it's a slug yeah do we have a pencil to put that on i think i put it away they are they really are awesome I don't have one yet, which is pretty depressing. Made by the same guy that made this little hand. These are really cool. Um, I'll go on the back of a pencil. And then we have one. This is also a keychain. So you can put it on your keychain. Pretty neat. <laughs> same guy that made the dolphin that you guys saw me print in the uh, clear transparent blue sparkles he made this too got all kinds of cool stuff really the frog. this i printed at half size so it's a little stringy because i downsized it a lot but it's a little little frog a ribbit there's a triceratops there's a T-Rex. I think the T-Rex is at 50 or 75%, something like that. He got printed real tiny. Um, the T-Rex, this was in Solval's uh, filament. It, it feels like a bar of soap, literally. It looks like a bar of soap. Um, they're, it's really squishy filament. Yeah. But feels that, like a bar of soap. It looks like a bar of soap. This was printed on the SVO2, one of my first. Actually, I think this was the very first dual print. No, the very first one was the butterfly. And then I did this cat with two color filament. So on both sides. So that's why it's gray on one side because the filaments that I used were both gray on one side. It was dual color. And then they were copper and uh, this bronze on the other. So one side they matched up with the gray. So it looks like a burnt cat or something. <laughs> and then on this side... It's the copper and bronze together. It's a burnt cat. And then I got one more to show you. The astronaut. Oh, the astronaut. The astronaut I printed in all white. I haven't finished painting him all the way yet. But i uh, been trying to paint him up. It's hard to paint with acrylic. I should have primered it first. It would have came out a little better. But overall, not too bad. Pretty cool little guy. Can we show he can him? sit up and whoa. Don't break it. And his helmet comes down. His visor, you can flip it up and down just by moving his head. It works by weight. So it's just perfectly balanced to where it opens and shuts. But a uh, pretty so cool, cool little guy. It's fun. Now, put him up there. Also got a giant dragon too, actually, that I printed, or that my wife printed, actually. I'll actually show you this one one more. The dragon is so cool. It's really large. Um, it's like a Chinese dragon. You know, their culture dragon. Really awesome. Made by the Flexi guy. It's almost two foot long. I think it's a foot and a half. It was printed with that gold filament. Same that I used on the sign there. Pretty nifty. I'll put it out. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, on to step five. Or... I almost dropped it. <laughs> objective parts complete, including... Ah. Yep, smooth rods are all there. Oh, jeez. 
believe they're all tightened Tells down. Me not having technical as much as they're supposed to be. Yes. Yep, those are tight. All right. Step five. We're over halfway through, or this is the midway point. Six of the M410s. I guess I didn't need these M5. The Dragon like Slayers. I thought. I thought I needed M5 points. That was M530s that I used. Okay. We did not need the M520s. We'll put those back up on the chair. So now we need the M410s, I believe. M4, yep. M4 times 10 is what it is, not M410. There's 10 of them. I th no, there's not 10 of them. There's 2, 4, 6. I don't know why it's M4 times 10. M4 by 10. That's what it is. 4, four millimeters by 10. by 10 millimeters. 4 millimeters. 4 by 10. I don't know why they put a little multiplication sign in there for the times sign. But prepare the following parts. Hot bit assembly. M4 by 10s. Socket head. Hex screws. 6X. 4 millimeter Allen wrench. Six washers, which are already not on there. There's not washers on these, which begs the question of where they are hiding all these washers that this thing keeps asking for. There is none, there's no washers. Hmm, must be talking about something else. I don't know. There's not washers with them though. And then five by twenty fives are done. That's the bed clips. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know what that's talking about. He's confused. It's not here. They do give you an extra nozzle. It looks like and an an adapter for the Bowden tube. Um, the Bowden tube is just. Pull the filament through smoothly, I guess, which I don't even see about about YouTube. Oh. Technical get difficulties. I know there's supposed to be one. Oh, there it is. There it is. Hmm. I wonder if I'm gonna have to end up taking this off. I think this was supposed to go up and outside. That's what it was talking about. Keep it outside. You're supposed to bring this up and around. Oh, well, I'll fix that here in a little bit. Let's get... Maybe I should do that now. Abby? Yeah? I don't need your help again. I just figured out a mistake that we made. I was listening. <laughs> or that I made. We could just take this out and then just like... Actual, uh, no, that won't work. I was gonna say we just take this off, but we'd have to take that stepper motor off and all those fans because they're all connected. So I wish this part was a little easier out, to figure out. Up, then screw it back in. Huh? We could take this out, put it around. That's what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> That's what I said. We got to. <gasps> we got to. Don't have a choice. Can't have it together all messed up. Y'all can skip this part of the video. Go take your break. Go to the bathroom. Get Make food. a cake or something. Build a car. Maybe a new house. That's all you got time for, though. Don't do a whole neighborhood. Munch on some chips. After I finally got that hex screw or that T-nut over there properly, and then this happens. Go take a shower. Get some good hygiene. Yeah, go hydrate, too. All right. Hold this up for me, please. Just hold the frame up. Thank you. That's the wrong size. I wish I had the same size screwdriver for everything. That would be nice. Not really possible, but... It would be thoroughly enjoyed. 
Whoops. I think I was supposed to take that all the way off. <laughs> but I did. All right, you can let it down. Because I'm about to put that T-nut back on there, too. Michael had the same the problem as us. Now this is the part. If you get Whoa. one of these SVO5s, make sure this is all on the out side. side. And Ooh. untwisted. There we go. Please. This goes on the outside. Please. Where does this go, Abby? On the outside. On the outside. <laughs> Where were you earlier to tell me that? Sheesh. <laughs> Looks like I bent that. Tightening this. Alright. It's <laughs> fine. It's fine. Good lord. Alright. Good lord. Oh my lordy lord. Now we have this on the outside. I'm going to scare off everyone. Like, sorry, guys. All right. This is going in properly. Like it should have the first time. But it didn't. Instructions unclear. I now have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, though. I like peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I know, me too, actually. Huh? I used to not, but I do now. Okay. Now hold this up one more time for me, honey bumpkin. And sugar oh plum. Gosh. Oh my gosh, please. <laughs> oh man. What? This needed to go on there before. I gotta unscrew this again. <laughs> hold that part and this part. We'll try to make this quick and painless. Come well, on, it's not that hard to put it in. I just wanted to watch Stranger Things. You are watching a Stranger Thing. Stranger than normal. Yeah. This has to go on here. Shoot. This is why... I don't know why this is. Now this is going to go up in here first. Like so. And then go up underneath there. All right. Can you pay attention, please? I don't want to drop this. We're almost in there. We've almost got it, Abby. After, you know, they always say the third time's a charm. And they are right. This is the third time that we have put this on there. And it worked. Mm -hmm. See? Third Yay. time is always a good charm. The third time. The third time. Now let's only do everything one more time. Ah. time. Alright. What's next? What should have been next? The bed. <gasps> no. no, I didn't say go to bed. Oh. I said the bed. I hope I'm supposed to cut that. It looks kind of odd, doesn't it? Like it's got grease or something in it. Like what is in this tape? 
This has a film on it. So they send you this piece of glass. It's not porous glass like you would think, you know, like what comes on the uh, SVO2. It's just a piece of glass. I don't, I'm sure it's a special type of glass, but I'm not sure what type of glass that would be. Ooh, this is it, what it fans looks like. you whenever you do this. It's fancy? No, it fans you. Oh, fans. Yeah, very nice. But you do get this beautiful magnetic flexi bed also that you can use with it if you don't want to use the glass. How beautiful. So beautiful. And it just magnetizes beautifully. I don't know if, if you've never messed with a magnet bed, um, which I have not. So I am very impressed with how magnetic it really is. It goes on there really nice. Oh, that's, um, that's nice. It's a nice surface. This will fit on my Ender 3 also. This glass, it's the same size bed. So I may swap it in and out over there while I'm waiting on a part to cool and start printing on this. I don't know. We'll see. So for now, I'm going to move this out of the way into the foam. All right. So we got the bed right here. Thanks. And if you notice, we'll take this magnet off for now, actually, until we get this installed. Um, very nice surface underneath the magnet. I think this is some sort of film that makes it magnetic. You could probably even print on that if you wanted to tear it up and put another one on there. It looks like you could. I've that's really neat. I like that. Uh, it has the flat springs already in the bed, so you don't have to replace those. I do have rubber feet. I don't know that I will need them, although I could upgrade these really fast and easy with the rubber spacers, which I may go ahead and do. Where's those rubber spacers at? Well, maybe someday you can try printing on glass. Hold this for me. Maybe. And then, like, a small print that won't take so long. With both hands. Because I think I'm just going to go ahead and put these silicone feet on here. We'll show them right over here. How we going to do it. Hold it flat, please. Like up in the air a little bit. There we go. Come on. Beyblade. <laughs> Let it rip. Takes a lot of spinning. I know it probably just kills them to see me ripping this bed apart as soon as I got it, but uh, I was going to put these rubber feet on my SVO2, but I decided against it just because I don't have any problems with the level bed on there. I have the flat springs on it, and it works just fine. So Now this is going to get a little squirrely, so make sure you don't drop it. Don't hold on to this. Hold on to this. There you go. And this is a Creality bed. But don't tell nobody. What's that? The same people that made the other printer that we have. The Ender. Oh. So here's those flat springs. I'm just going to take those off. And save those as backups for later. Even though I printed the spacers for these feet already. <laughs> to go on the, so the uh, SVO2. I'm not going to use them on the SVO2. I'm just going to go ahead and put them on here. I think they're supposed to go like this. But I'm not sure. Be careful with these screws. Oh, no, I guess they won't fall out. I don't know if that's supposed to go like that or like these. We're going to put it like these.
And then, like I said, I made these spacers for the so the SVO two, but decided against it. I think this needs to come out. I think I don't. Or does it go like this? Yes. Okay. That on there. That was perfect. That one. Somebody setting off fireworks? It's the box. Is Hanzo in the back box? I don't, I think it's the screws. I think, I think they went somewhere. Because there's only two. The screws are running off. What we raggy. So we're going to tighten these up at the same time. You never really want to unloosen them like I did. Differently, you can warp the bed or whatever at the same time together not opposite sides but if you would like to tighten them i'll hold it yeah there you go a little confusing isn't it no first you're twisting them different ways you started to you're good now you're good all right that looks level enough, right? We'll yeah. level it afterwards. Anyways. Yeah, the screws, I think they, they rolled down into this box. That's where they went. That's what we heard rumbling like this. Why'd you do that? Because we'll get them out. We gotta get in there anyway. All right. So here's the bed. Bye. Screws just left us. We got screwed. <laughs> <laughs> They're springs anyway, not screw oh screws. Uh let's see. No here. pun intended. Keep front of the machine facing you. That's always a step. It always says keep the machine facing you. All right. Now it's facing me. <laughs> Prepare the following parts. Hot bed assembly. Four by ten right there. Time six or six of them. Four meter Allen wrench. If these are supposed to have washers, so will, you guys did not send me these with washers. There's no washers anywhere. Um, so if it's supposed to have washers, I don't know what to do about that. Which in this picture, it says that they are. And these are the four by tens. The uh, M four by tens, six pieces. There is no washers with these, so I don't really know what to do about that. Um, there was none in a separate bag or anything like that. I I don't know what to do about it. I don't have any on hand. There's none in these little bags or this box. <laughs> So, whoever put this together did not put the washers in it. <laughs> That's all I can say. And it does show washers in the picture. That kind of saddens me. Aw. Hmm. Don't know if it's going to hurt it. I don't think it will. Uh, maybe I'll go to the hardware store and I'll get some, but not right now. We'll just put it together and hope it stays together and doesn't fall apart. All right. Connect it using the six screws. Looks like on the outside. Does it not want me to put the arms on there first? 
Nope. Says screws first. All right. I think that's kind of odd that you wouldn't put the arms that hold the bed first. Not sure why this step is number five. And then six is putting the arms under the bed. Well, uh. All right, let's tighten these down with the right screwdriver. Or the right wrench, whatever you want to call it. They seem to be tightening down okay. All right, that part's done. Now, after that, Do not press hard on the hotbed assembly while installing the hotbed assembly. Excessive force caused the hotbed to deform. Gotcha. I hope the washers, or lack thereof, do not cause it to deform. Uh, let's see. Prepare the following parts. The hotbed holders. We're going to have to screw this up. And move it up. Just like so. I'm going to have to make me a little knob to go on the top there. So we can get underneath it. This is the anti-backlash Z-screw also. Um, so the bed cannot just fall down on I thought it wasn't supposed to do that. I don't know. I thought that that's what that was for. But I had no idea. Got that up in the air. Now we'll get the uh, couplings for the arms that go underneath. It looks like they will go like so. Hmm. You need my brains? Maybe. I got big brains. Uh, I'm not really sure. I need to be on step six. That's why. Step six. six step six. Oh, goes sideways like this. And that clips onto the side. I think. No. Okay, why do you, what do you need my brains for? Because I got good brains. 
I think, yeah, that does. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Yeah. Shane, I got it. <laughs> you still need my brains? Yeah, I'm going to need you to do the other side. How? Like how I just put this on there. This oh. will go up against here, and this will slide on the side of it, and it's very satisfying to push on to the bed. Go ahead, push. You already pushed it on? No. The top up here. Oh, oh, yeah. Isn't that satisfying? Yeah. It's got such a smooth but yet powerful grip. Yes. Nice. 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 <laughs> it doesn't really show you very well what way these clamps are supposed to face so we'll go back to rodney roger roger we need you yeah i see it goes underneath now technical difficulties let's see i always like going back to his video of his install because it helps me out a lot let's see what you got going on Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh, where did he put the... He's not doing this in the order of the manual. That is for sure. Okay, so the long part... I probably could have figured that out had I just tried to match it up, but I wanted to be for sure. But yeah, he did not put this stuff together in the same order that this manual is telling you to do everything. Which is okay. That's fine. These are not labeled left or right, so I guess it does not matter. Maybe. Maybe not. Hmm. Goes like this. It's a little odd. I guess you gotta take these little T nuts off of here. Because they will have to work as a regular nut to go on the other side of it. Looks like to hold it in place. Yeah. Oh, I see. There's a little groove there that shows you, kind of guides you into the right spot. Let's get this little groove, this little tooth right here, and these teeth will go perfectly into the slots. So that's how you know if you're doing it right. Let me go click this. For some reason, it disconnected. There we go. Reconnected. These peanuts. I always think that these go on with the that part up top, but it's not. It's ouch! That dang chandelier. 
thank you, Michael. We might need your help so soon just or sometime. Just on there and then screw it in. <laughs> He's having trouble. <laughs> just like that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Yeah. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I guess they use these T-nuts so it can hold itself while you're screwing these on there. Because they don't spin due to the shape of them. They automatically get held in there. Oh no, how are you supposed to get to the top one? See, those instructions are backwards, so that actually has to go on. Huh. This doesn't make much sense. There's a little, there's no space to get the T-nuts on the back of the top screws if you go by the instructions because it tells you to put the bed on there first before you guys need to redo your manual see this tells you to put the bed on there first okay but if you do that when you go to the next step on step six there's this little space that you got to put the t-nuts on the on these brackets and you can't get to it because the bed's in the way But, luckily, I have okay. I can't partially assemble them. That's the why we have viewers. Let me see what he said. It's, it's been easier like if you partially hours. assemble them towards the bottom and while loose, bring them up and then tighten them. I see, said the blind man. <laughs> How can the blind man see? I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> That's why. Maybe it said that in the instructions. I don't know. I didn't read. Like I said, I install stuff by the pictures. So we need to loosen these up. Take it off the bed. Bring it down. Yeah. That works. That works real well. Not your first cubic structure, I see. Like you've done this before. <laughs> That's why I have my assistant checking chat and stuff for me. I was getting ready to whip out these lovely tweezers that I got in a nozzle kit that they gave me for some reason. That was uh, 40 nozzles for $8. It came with hardened steel nozzles and uh, some other kind of nozzle. They were all 0.4 millimeters. Oh my God. I'll show them to you. 
I got this whole bag. It was eight ninety nine. You get the wire toothbrush, the metal toothbrush to scratch the nozzle, the little cleaning needle spring thingies, two pairs of tweezers. One of them's curved. Um, this little wrench, which fits on the nozzles perfectly, that's that's great there. And then there's something you can push the nozzle out. See, they got little holes there, so you can push them back out if they get stuck in there while you're taking them off. They gave me two of these. The Hardens steel nozzles. I think those are the hardened steel ones, or maybe these are. I don't know. One of them's darker than the other. That's all I know. And then a the bunch dog. of 0.4 millimeter brass ones. And then they, I guess they're just trying to get rid of wrenches. And so they gave me this. I don't know <laughs> why, try to get rid of wrenches. why that was in there with it. But all of this was eight ninety nine. I figured I'd try it out for $9. That's... Seems like a good enough deal for me. And here's the little bent ones I was getting ready to try to reach in there with that they gave me. But, uh, I mean, for $9, if they're not any good, if they only last five prints each, it's whatever. $9. Not a big <laughs> deal. But thank you for that tip, Michael. That yes. was perfect. Thank you, you see what Michael. Michael told us to do? He said to put it on down here and then slide it up and then tighten it, huh? Yeah, and I'm the one that pointed He's out, Michael. He's a genius, the, isn't he? I'm the one that's looking at yeah. the chat. Yeah, go Michael. Woo, Michael! Everybody give Michael a like on that comment. That was a great one. You made my Good life one. easier. Much mo easier. Whoops. Let's make sure we're pushing that up as far as it'll go so we can tighten it down. Thank you, Michael. And then Michael FTW. What does that mean? For the win. For the win. <laughs> FTW, Michael. If you were here, Michael, I'd give you a free brass nozzle. Maybe even, actually, even a hardened steel one. I don't know what that is. Just a hardened steel nozzle. Okay. <laughs> Just uh, something you can print higher temperatures with. Oh. Better. It doesn't wear out as fast as the brass ones. They take longer to heat up, but um, they're better for abrasive materials, carbon fiber materials, stuff like that. I don't know anything. I don't know anything about printing. I just know stuff about painting. Well, if you take a brass one and paint it gray, it becomes a hardened one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take these. I'm the painter. I paint here. stuff in the business. I'm cool like that. We got to take that other arm off, Abby, that you uh, pushed onto the bed. <laughs> yeah, this part's a little annoying. I feel like they could have figured out how to maybe leave all this with one part, although it probably wouldn't be safe for transportation. I'm scared to take it off. It'd probably get bent. I don't want to break anything. <laughs> hey. All right. We will. Pull this off the side slowly but surely like that. I love how smooth that goes on there. It's just awesome. We will attach this. Oh, that's upside down. This. Abby, can you come here for a minute? Hold this up in the air. Yeah. This back part is gonna. There we go. Actually, I gotta hold it like that, and then like this. I don't want to tighten it up too much, though. Whoops. There we go. 
Dim Dees one. What are you looking for? Washers? They didn't come with it. No, I was I was seeing <laughs> if Matt Matthew did anything. Oh. You mean Michael? Michael. Yeah, Michael, sorry. I accidentally called Michael Matthew. <laughs> Sorry, bestie. That one goes. On there. We got one more. Abby. Just hold it right there, yeah. They clip on the inside. I know. Don't worry, we've done this before, me and Michael. We know what we're doing here. Okay. We just need to get there we go. Now we will scoot it up. And then we slide it in? Yep. And you scoot down. There we go. Oh I won't go in. Satisfying. Damn it. <laughs> Dang the chandelier. Curse you. Then we'll start tightening these up. I can't see over there. <laughs> you got this straight. Yeah, there you go. That's not right. Bam, 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 ba, da, ba, ba. Holy <laughs> Mouthful. All right. Yay. So happy. Yeah, me too. Me too. What? Oh. The cat ran away. I'm just trying to make sure these are all at a good tightness. I don't think it's supposed to. Yeah, it doesn't close all the way on the inside. So it doesn't look like it's all the way tightened, but it is tight enough, I believe. Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I got the inside clips. Those. Those are on there. I think I got the bed properly now. I think. I don't know. Pretty sure. Nope. I think I got them on backwards. I sure do. I got them on the wrong side. Those are supposed to go on the inside out. Not the outside in. That's just great. Glad you said something, Michael. I did it backwards. Those I clipped them on the outside, not the inside. All right. Here's for doing everything as backwards as we can to make this build last twice as long. That one is supposed to be over there and vice versa. Which I should have known because when I watched the video on these things, I seen them clipped on the inside. When I think about it, it looked like they were much more underneath the bed than what I have them. Abby? Yeah? I did it wrong again. <sighs> what did you mess up this time? 
I got these backwards by putting them in the wrong spot. <laughs> so these don't go on the outside. These are supposed to be upside down like this. And they go up underneath the bed like this, and they clip on the inside, I think. I think that's what Michael is saying, and I think that is what these is this instructions right, Michael? say. And when I look closer. Is this correct? See, look right here. They're on the inside of these things facing outwards. Yes, it's correct. Thank you, Michael. Just Thank great. <laughs> Just great. I'm glad he's here. <laughs> I'm so glad he's here. Thank you so much, Michael. So everybody don't make the same mistakes that I am. They do clip from the inside. I've already built three of these, as you can see. It's the same one. I've just built it three, three times. Three times. Oh my god! What happened to the robot? What robot? It did not. I printed that with the ender, and it didn't work properly. That's all. I oh know. no, <laughs> guys! It's rations of a robot. Poor, that's all I know. Happened. Poor robot. I just drop it again. Poor robot. Oh. That's what happens when you use the Creality printer. When you what? That was with the Creality printer, the Ender 3V2. I cannot get that thing to print properly anymore. It just doesn't want to. Oh, well, good thing we got the Soul the SV05. Very nerd. Yay! All right. So I think I had them on the right side. I just had them upside down. <laughs> they go in, I believe, like. Ow. Hey, Why is our hair dry? Look good. Like that. Okay. Yeah, I had them on the wrong side too. Goes like this on the inside. All right. That makes more sense. That's a lot stronger wow. of a build, too. When you do it that way. So now. I feel like this would be like the really better tools. Video. We put these in there correctly. This is hard to do by myself. <laughs> and without the right screwdriver. <laughs> All right, that one's in there. Let me get another one of these peanuts. Not peanuts. Peanuts. Tomorrow is a pep rally for school. I'm happy I'm not a cheerleader. That and I don't one. have to perform in the pep rally. Happy I'm not a band member, so I don't have to perform in the pep rally. Oh, oh no, my soulful son! Oh my god, no! <laughs> we love soulful! I do. 
Don't know about you. I love Soho. But I sure do. This message is not paid for. I have, we have money. No money is exchanged hands between Soho and I. We and just I can guarantee you. We just take their product and then we make things out of it and we get money. What? <laughs> oh yeah, I do make stuff with it and then make money. I make items with their printer and then sell them. My little mini print farm. There's a dual color, which is the Sovol 2. SVO2, yes. SVO2. And we have an Ender. Uh, what? Thing? Ender 3V2. Ender 3V2. And SV05. Probably the best printer. Hopefully the fastest one, anyway. Hopefully the fastest. They said it can print at 80 millimeters a second. Ooh. We'll see about that. Yeah, you should do that. You should do that, Michael. I'm just saying that because it looks fancy. <laughs> oh. ah. Runny nose. Runny nose. Runny nose. Ah, ah. Runny nose. Runny nose. Do, do, do. All right, finally, I got one on right. <laughs> one. Now let's do the other one. Abby? Yeah? Would you mind holding this one, too? <gasps> After put it on there properly. There we go. All right, hold that one in there. Now I gotta do this left-handed and I am not a lefty. My back is broken. Your back is broken? Yeah, it looks like it in the camera. There we go. Hands on there. Oh, it has fingerprints. Yeah, that's where you were holding it. Get in there. That was in there. We got one more. And then this gruesome part is how we can twist it a little bit this way so I can see it. And you don't have to cry about it. No, I don't. I don't want <laughs> you should go catch it. It should be tired by now. It's been running all day. I have? Hasn't it? What? Oh, man. I thought that was... Oh. I need a smaller table. I said your nose should be tired. It's been running all day. <sighs> all right. Now. Push it in. Hold on. Yeah. Get 
Did it go in there? There we go. There we go. There we go. You guys should just hire Michael to build your stuff. He pays attention exactly how it should go together. He's probably watching the video on how to build it while I'm doing it to make sure I don't mess it up. All right, that is on there really good. The arms are installed. They are sturdy. What is next? Glad that part's over. That was a pain in the back. Let's see here. Got all that part done. It's upside down. That's just great. Hmm. What? is this that looks like a little corner piece hmm I don't think they sent me that piece Unless I'm blind. Uh oh. Is it in here? No, nope, those are just bed clips. That's not it. This is the spool holder. That's not it. That's the power supply. Let me look in the box. Box. I don't think they sent us all the parts. This box had already been opened and retaped shut three times. I could tell it had three layers of tape where it was cut open and then retaped. Look at the box. It's look towards the bottom of the packaging for a little square cutout. Not in there. I already looked under there, Abby. Oh, what did you do there? You! Is there any washers in here? No. What was this? Over the top of it? Yeah, it was right there. I didn't even. There was like, oh, see. Look at this, guys. Look at this. So, in the box, <laughs> there was this little. Compartment right here, which I didn't see. I thought I took everything out because I was looking for this. And she looks down there and she pulls this out. Why do you have a secret compartment right here? That's not really noticeable. It I did it because like Michael Michael said, look towards the bottom of the packaging for a oh, square cutout. Michael again, of course. What do you work for, Sobel? <laughs> <laughs> so she went and looked after reading your comment and boom. And he even said, in the foam. Sure was. I wonder if there's any washers in here for these uh, bed screws. 
Thank you, Michael. Yes, thank you again, Michael. <laughs> that is such a hidden compartment, though, right there. Who would think to look right there? Oh, hi, May Young. Hi, May. She said that four minutes ago. Oh, well, I just now said hi. I still don't see the washers for these, though. That is definitely not findable. Michael even said the corner piece is hidden in the packaging material at the bottom. Yeah, he said, oh, he has this printer. He missed it, too. He said, <laughs> that's a pretty hidden spot there. I'm going to put my coin that I have that's worth $700 in that little hole. <laughs> you have a coin that's worth Nobody $700? Will ever, yeah, I got a, um, a Bitcoin? double die stamped oh, I thought silver it was... dollar. Oh, cool. Cool, cool, cool. But uh, that is hilarious. Such a tiny little spot. Ha ha, hilarious. But good, we got it. All right. Yeah, it looked like they're the um, the screw heads look like they have washers like built into them, like the way that they're built, um, but they're not loose. It's actually part of the screw head, but in the manual it shows a separate washer that comes with it. But it looked like they were welded to it or maybe i don't know maybe they are there it's hard to tell they didn't move whenever i touched them maybe they're not supposed to but yeah when i look at them it does look like they are attached that's why i was looking at them real close earlier <clears throat> they do look attached or something i don't know it's not moving or wiggling and those are down they're not coming loose so i'm not really it is about confusing it. but yeah, I just figured they would be in a separate bag or something since it showed them. And when you compare the picture, actually, the picture doesn't have that little notch. So they've just got it in there so smoothly. You can't really tell. Everything is going well. Yes, it is going well. It's uh, coming together. I keep thinking there's stuff missing, but there's not. You just can't find it. Yeah, I'm just blind. <laughs> so now we got this little corner piece. It's going on the side here. I do suggest you use a smaller table that you can get all the way around, not have to lean over and do stuff. It's definitely a, a pain. I'm glad to have Abby here to help. The make, lovely assistant. Make her lean over the table. Now let's make sure I'm putting this on right before Michael gets on to me and lets me know that I'm not. <laughs> but I think this actually is correct. Yes. This does go here. For sure. I feel like the, the power supply is in this picture and tells me to prepare it. Sticky stuff all over the manual. Um, okay, here's where it tells me to put the power supply in. It's in step seven. Display, power supply, and filament holder. So, yeah, you are helping, that's for sure. You got some extra in 5x20s? That's, I've got some 5x20s I haven't used yet, which I haven't seen it tell me to just yet. Maybe it's in step 8 or 9. Yeah, I don't, I don't see where it tells you to use the M5x20s. And maybe they're just shipping them out to people. I don't know. Maybe, I don't, I don't know. 
the M four by twenties. Message. See, it's, yeah, I don't know. That doesn't make sense. I run to the computer. I guess we'll go ahead and just put the power supply on. It doesn't really tell what screws to use or anything <gasps> for it. Sorry. Power supply. Yeah, I know that this it's a good printer. Michael says it's a good printer, so if he says it's a good printer, it's a good printer. Now this is a little confusing. Did they put this together backwards? Please don't tell me. Well, look at this picture. So when you hold the power supply up, you see you got all these holes and stuff. It doesn't show any in the picture. And then if you look closely, the plug is on the left-hand side. And the button's on the right-hand side. And this does not match up with the picture. It's May. almost like it's backwards. May. Michael, was that on yours too? It's almost like they put the switch on backwards. Which it all looks neat. The fan certainly. faces outside. Yeah, I guess so. Just in the picture, it doesn't show that. So I wasn't sure. And the, the button's backwards on the picture too. Thank you so much for staying here, Michael. We love you. So this will go here. Hmm. I guess it kind of hangs off the side. It looks like. Like this. These wires are kind of in the way. I guess it'll go like that. Just move those down and out of the way for now. And maybe these are the M4 by 20 screws. Right here. These will go in right here. Home screwdriver. Neat little spot for the uh, power supply to go. It's kind of hidden from view. Just goes in line with the wall. Let's see what you guys did here. I like it. I feel like we could have maybe got it up underneath somehow. Make it a little more fancy. Which I'll probably figure out in the future. Take it off of there. Maybe. I don't know. 
tuck it in behind over here and build a little shell to go around it. Check in the chat. And uh, blender. People tell me not to use blender to make functional items. I do it all the time. Uh, just like blender, there's a lot more things you can do with a model if you want to do a little bitty extrusions or whatever. So. How's the printer doing? Yeah, I put the cables underneath. Um, it actually mounts up pretty good. There's space there to get it in there now. So. What I need to know is what is these? Okay, that's the power supply right there. And is this one set to one or two twenty like the rest? They sure do. Them little sneaky guys. Before I forget, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my power supply to one fitting. You know how that goes. Yeah, I, I've got Fusion 360, but it's just a trial period. I didn't buy it or anything just yet. I, that's what I wanted to use, but when I found out it wasn't free, and I wasn't sure how much I was going to like it, so I just uh, went with something that was free. Learned how to use Blender pretty decently. Not perfect, but, you know, I'm getting better. I'm getting a lot better. Really fast, actually, too. I made the uh, SVO2 boxes was the first thing that I made the storage boxes on there that snapped onto the feet very nicely um, only had to print those once and they worked just fine try to keep this stuff a little better organized I think it's funny this is this is the filament you get but this is a budget printer um, you get a budget spool to test it out with I'm curious to see what the files are that came with it. They can't be too big. Probably, yeah, you can probably get a benchy boat or two out of that. But I've got plenty of, plenty of filament. I've spent a ton of money on filament. I've got some glow-in-the-dark stuff I haven't opened yet that I wanted to try. Got some TPU. I haven't got any ABS or um, PETG yet, though. I started to get some, and then I, I canceled the order. Wasn't sure if I would like it or not. I figured I'd just wait to see how the printer goes first. All right. Now we've got that done. We need the spool holder, which is right here. I know what these look like, and I know how these go on. Maybe. I don't know. Could have been doing those wrong the whole time, too. Ah. Um, yeah, this spool is right there. I feel like the spool holders should have been made a little skinnier on all 3D printers because you can't fit. This is the problem with them. When you get a spool, it's only 250 grams or 250 or 200 grams, which is what I refer to as a quarter roll. They do not fit on these, unless you get one that doesn't have this. If the center part wasn't here on the spool, it would fit, but it, it does. It just doesn't fit in there, so you can't put them on there. So what I did is I took a spool box and I rammed a screwdriver through the center of it and then I put the spool in there and run it out of a hole and that's my homemade <laughs> spool holder for those. Now where does this go? This goes on the side right here, I think. Why are these screws on the inside? I guess it has to be. Or do I have that backwards too? Of course. I think the other ones were built that way though. Let me go look. I just got ignored. That's depressing. 
But I guess it just depends. I guess on the SVO2, they so were. The SVO2. I guess it doesn't matter. You can orientate it however you want, really. So this goes like this. Like this. Yours. Yeah, it's, so I can get the hex screwdriver in there better. I guess I'll just do it this way. I do wish they put the little balls on the end of these uh, hex wrenches like they did the other ones. For the SVO2 anyway. Those wrenches are much nicer to use. I guess you just put this wherever so it doesn't hit the ground when you put a spool on it. Or the table anyway, not the ground. Almost been streaming for three full hours. That's fine, Abby. I see people building some of those creality machines for it takes only six hours. Six what? Yep. Six. Six hours? Sometimes. It just depends. Especially when you got to take something down and rebuild it three times. Rebuild it three times. Sometimes That's it just takes you. longer. That fits good right there. That'll work. All right. Let's take that bag off. Put it over here. Took Next it off. step. Using it. It tells me to twist the hex nuts, but you can't really do that. Why not? I mean, I guess maybe you can get them at the very end. Maybe I just need to loosen them up a little more to get them out there. They're just, you need some space to get them twisted once you get them in there. And these are just not very long. It's not like the other ones where they lay on top and you can just set them up there so it doesn't really matter as much. There they go. There they go. There that one goes anyway. I guess that's all you got to do. You just put them out there to the very, very end. I'm going to leave this here while I go to the sink in there. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. As a matter of fact, if you don't mind, could you bring me a drink when you go in there? I'm getting thirsty. I would appreciate it. All right. Is this your drink? No, I already drank all of my drinks. Right. Yours is probably sitting around here. Or that might be Spencer's. All right, that part's done. Now we need the control board oh goes in next and this comes with uh, t-nut screws already on it too so the 5 by 20 screws I think so well I think you guys are sending out some uh, screws that we don't need 
uh, May, if you're watching this, maybe you can tell us what those screws are for. Because I don't see them. Well, they're not used for anything. They're, they, they're, I mean, there's not like we're using some and we didn't just use these. They're not for anything. Unless they're for these uh, inside things. But I think that could be what they're for, Michael. They, it looks like the inside um, corners of the frame uses these. It's the same. So maybe it's they're just extra for stability of the frames because the inside um, diagonals here, corners look like they have that screw in them. And they are small enough to where they don't pop out the other side. So you, well, you do see them popping out a little bit in there. So I'm thinking maybe that's what they're for. Just some backup screws for stability or something. I don't know. I don't think you're supposed to put them in anywhere. Uh, like you said, you looked at the manual and you couldn't find it. I, I couldn't see anything with them either. So, so well, if that saves you some money and you can knock the price down 20 cents, I guess. But, uh, I know it wouldn't be that much. but I know you don't need it. So far, anyway, not that I've seen. And I'm going to put the screen on here. Like I said, I'm actually excited about these screens. I know they're not real fancy and they're not touch and they're not the ones that are in color and all that stuff. But I see these in videos all the time of other printers. And I kind of wanted one just to have one. No real reason. And I always liked the fact that people were able to print their own back for them, which I thought was kind of stylish. I love printing my own upgrades for my printers. He does. He really does. Or designing my own upgrades for my printers. Yep. Then sharing it with people. Yep. Who also enjoy it, which if you guys get time and you, if you ever see my post that I, about my uh, Soval drawers that I've printed on, or that I posted on printables by uh, Joseph Prusa, on the Prusa STL website, give it, give it a like if you don't mind, and uh, if you download it, that'd be great too. You earn free filament rolls and stuff on there. And I'm very close to getting a free filament roll. I Wait. just need a couple likes on one of my models. I've already got the downloads to get points. So Dad. that helps us out on there. That's his way of having people upload their models and it just not be stolen from them. They, they, they at least get to make free filament off of likes and downloads. So are that's we, why I use it. Are we going to like choose a film thing? And then it's just like a big thing, and then they just watch it the whole night. No. What are we gonna print? Can we print? Can we print? Can we print me another guitar pick? Whatever is takes the least amount of time. My guitar pick, a guitar pick. Yeah, that doesn't take very long. All right, what we got next here? That's all done. Um, it does have these little plastic plugs that come with it and a little cover for the uh, Creality Cigar Touch. Please. This little guy goes on him right there, I think. Or up here. I don't know. I missed something somewhere. That goes. I don't know where that goes. But yes, these buttons go in those holes down there that you were pointing at. Right here. And right here, up 
here so you don't have to look at these nasty holes like it matters but it does kind of clean it up makes it look a little better now i got all these wires hanging all over the place i gotta figure out what to do with them <laughs> i bet you that one well we need to find the top for it yep i don't know that one goes there And this one is the X and X. Huh? Huh? Let's look at everything we got here before we start plugging stuff in. That's a thermistor, I do believe. Those are two wires. I know that. I know that. For show. For oh, show. Oh, show, I know that. For oh, show. What? That is true. A lot of custom firmware does support those little things a lot more often. I have noticed that there's they got everything for them. All right, this is Z. I lost my phone. X. Eyes. Abby, how about that drink, huh? It's right there. Oh, thank you. When did you get that? I didn't even see you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I even like put I it like thirsty. in front of your face. Yes, I am thirsty. Here, hold it for me while I drink it. Hold what? The can. How, how am I going to do <laughs> Child labor. <laughs> All right, this is the Z. Y. Well, the stepper motor and one's what? For the board? No, I'm a little confused here. The switches, the motors and the switches. That's what it is. Stepper motors. Here's the switch, but there's not one for Z because we have the CR touch. There's another switch somewhere. It clicks. There's the other stepper motor. That's the Z axis. That I know. There's the Z. This one goes to this one. Spin. That I know. You spin me right around, baby, right around. Okay. That goes there. That goes around and tucks in there. Now this, the Y, the Y. Which one is Y? I always forget. What's it? Y. The top cover for the um, for the wire hiding thing. I always forget which one of the Y and the X axis. Let me go look at my. <laughs> I don't know why I always get this mixed up. I'm pretty sure X is like to and fro. We have a tragic thing, guys. I lost my phone. Lost your phone? Yeah. And I don't want to do the searching thing because it's going to make a loud ding and stuff like that. Like, ding, 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 ding. Let me get this S seal. I know this is ridiculous, but I can never remember. So, yeah. Oh, okay. No, Y is forward and backwards, and hey. X is left and right. Hey, guys. All right. <sighs> he didn't open up the 
Dad, you need to open up the thingy so we can Got see it. the chat. Left and right is X, which is this one. X. Oh, wait a minute. We got two of them. I'm going to leave this right here. One is for the belt. This one's been. That's the dual Y axis. I remember seeing that in the video of the advertisements. Okay, that is the one. Yeah, Y that goes forwards and backwards. And what is this? Ah, that's the switch. That's what it is. How do you, I guess like this? There's the Y switch. And then, I don't know whether to put these wires on the outside of the frame. I guess you can't, or you could. I guess like this. I don't think that'll interfere with my print. Because they'll be down like this. And I'll probably just zip tie them to the frame anyway so they'll be out of the way. It's probably what I'm going to end up doing. But I don't like the way I got these wires set up. So I'm going to move it on this side. Underneath that one. That way that'll go down like that. There we go. There's the Y switch. And the Y stepper motor. And then the X stepper motor. I found my phone. I found it. Good. Smart. Now where's the switch for this axis? Is it on here? It is. I see. Okay, we're in there. Aha! He didn't like that. I put him down. He's our ground. I put him down. Bad kitty. You better not bite anybody. He never has. I don't think he would. But he's scratched. Yeah. He might do that. And he has bitten. All right, this is a lot of extra long wires. I got everything plugged in. I don't really like this wire situation. There's a lot of bundles here that seem to be a little excessive. But we'll make do. It's worth it all in the long run, I'm sure. Here's the cover. That will go down over it. Like so. I think it should I 
There it goes. I like that satisfying pop. See, this thing don't slide anymore. See, I put all that grease on there for nothing. It don't even, has nowhere to slide to. All this seems a little bit much. I will probably end up, I don't know. We'll just leave it. It probably needs it to move around, actually. So I probably shouldn't stationary that stuff anywhere. And we'll pull this. Uh, looks like this. I think this is in the way. So that needs to come back here. Into this. Bowden tube connector. I guess that's all the way down. And we'll plug this back in. All right. Is that right? Or is this supposed to be in the inside? That's got plenty of room. That's got plenty of room. Right? That's all got plenty of room to move. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Now, is there a switch on this side? There's not a switch on this side. So how does it know how far it can go? I guess by hitting that switch and then counting the steps. Or to hit that and then come back this way and it knows how far. I guess it only needs to go to the edge of the bed, which is right here anyways. It doesn't need to go that far. So that switch is nice and clicky. That one's nice and clicky. We've got our CR touch on there. Um, we just got to plug in the control board. Now. And I think we'll be ready to print. Yay! Finally. Oh, yes. The eccentric nuts and rollers. I forgot. We did definitely got to test those out. Make sure... It is all right, which the way, when I was just pushing everything, it seemed like they were okay. It seemed. Getting hungry. Hmm. That one's good. That one's a little tight. Those are all good. There's one really tight one on that side. That one's a little tight, too. All of those are. All right. I guess we'll have to adjust those. And I think these ones don't tighten or change. It's these ones that do, if I remember correctly. Yeah, those are definitely a little too tight. Wait, do we change it here or here? It's the nut, right? Not the bolt. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. I said mom the wrong group. What? I said mom the wrong group. Whoops. So she was leaning on a different group. The net, that's what I thought. What the hell I? I feel so bad. There we go.
Now I can spin it a little bit in place. It's not too tight where it's going to be a bumpy ride. That one's still pretty tight. There we go. Let's change this one over here. Right. These are so much easier to fix on this printer than the other ones. It's just so easy to get to those wheels than it is on the other ones. Can't really tell if the belt's going to be too tight or too loose. Feels all right. moving with ease that moves with ease with no resistance I think that I think the belts are good and he said the hot end was loose was you talking about uh, hmm, the wheels on the hot end there's a centric nut on the bottom okay Yeah, that doesn't move at all when you try to spin it. There we go. You want these to be able to move with ease and the wheels to spin in place a little bit, you know, not completely free spin but to where you can feel the traction with them against it. And it, so it's not hard for it to work to get across. The belt being tight is what's more important, which from the um, SV05, now they have this little tensioner right here. So it's really easy to do, whereas on my SV02, you had to take apart. It seemed like part of it just to get the belts tightened. So. On here, you can adjust the belt just by twisting this knob. And that's usually, you want them fairly tight so they don't skip and cause a layer shift. But you don't want to feel a lot of resistance from it when you're trying to get it to move. I think that's going to be great. I think that's great. That feels right. That just feels right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to go with the plastic bed first. The only thing I don't like about this magnet I've seen so far, if you don't line it up perfectly, boy, that sucker's already stuck once you lay it down. Like, you can't slide it around while it's on there. There we go. It's on there perfect. Hello, Ben. What's going on? Yeah, somewhat, Michael. Somewhat. <laughs> I was putting a thing together half backwards. I don't know. Maybe I just have dyslexia. <laughs> but in the end, we're getting it. We are getting it. That might be a problem. I don't think that's... 
that's going to reach. Um, I may have to go get. Yeah, I have to go get me extension. I gotta plug in the uh, LCD also. I wasn't quite sure which slot that was gonna go in, so I'll have to look to see if I can find it in the book. I didn't look at it before I tightened it down on there, and I probably should have. you think it would be something sticking out. Well, it doesn't really tell you in the book which one to plug it in. I don't want to take it back off. So I'm just going to go look at his video. You don't need the magnet sticker. Yeah. When you buy the replacements you're talking about, you don't need to put the magnet sticker on there, just the top part. We're going to find out where he plugged his or his uh, LCD in. This is one LCD that I've never used. Alright, he hasn't gotten it to it yet there. Here's the LCD he's putting it on. Did not show where he plugged it in. All right, I guess I'll just have to figure it out X EXP three. Let's have a look here. Which one is three? Let's just give her a good old tilt forward. One, two, three. Three is on the very end. Right there. Now, I know this is like a little housing or something for the touch. So I thought anyways, but I don't know exactly how it would go on there. <coughs> the very top, maybe? No, I don't know. I guess it doesn't. I don't know what this is for. Not too worried about it. It's a cable clip for the back right. That's right. I do remember seeing something about that. Now that you mentioned it, it goes in these little grooves, doesn't it? Yeah. That's right. Oh my gosh. Hey, I'm back. The one and only assistant. But it does not fit in easily with all of these cables being so thick. I guess you're only supposed to put certain ones in there, probably. Probably these ones. Oh, 
Oh, well. Good enough. Yeah. Good enough. There we go. Nice and beautiful. Because those ones kind of need to move around. So that one just stays there. This one, actually, that one will just go forward and backwards, but that's fine. Whatever. That goes in the box. Yeah. Yeah, this part back here. Yeah, I got it in there now. It's just not thick enough to fit a bunch. You can only fit like two of them in there. So, but I got them in there. So here it is. It's got an extension cord. So I can plug it in, which I happen to have right over here in the living room. <coughs> that sandwich was spicy. They are spicy. They're good, though. And let's see, right here, this plug, we'll plug this in right here, and plug this in right here, and we're about to give it life. Let's we'll see if sparks go flying, I hope not. That's a good sign from the uh, touch sensor. It's got a red and blue light on, and it went up and down. It says it's ready. Got no errors. I have no idea how to use this screen. It's weird, though. This screen has like a 3D look from the side a little bit, almost like it's popping out. Like oh. it's just levitating, which is pretty cool. Now, I have no idea how you get started on one of these. Is I... this actually changing anything right here? It doesn't look like it. So you got to put Michael... it in, and that'll take you to the menu. Michael sent us some, some stuff that we could print. I, I guess think. you'll go to bed leveling first. Do what, Abby? Michael sent us some things that we could print, I think. Three models, printables. Oh, he's talking about um, to print for cable management. I'll have a look at we that a little bit later. Some of those. Or I could, yeah, I could probably just print that stuff. Now let me see what it is. Oh, well, that just takes us to the website. Oops, I need to go back into Team Viewer. And then. Here. Um. I think I need to manually level the bed a little bit or something, but how do you do that? You know, before you do the maybe prepare. I bet it tells me all this in the manual, doesn't it? The factory springs on the bed should be fully compressed to the CR. Touch should trigger before it hits. I know like on the, all the other printers, you got to get us level manually before you do the auto leveling and create your mesh. Well, easy. guys, I got to go to bed. It's 10 minutes past my bedtime. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yes. Thank you, Abby, for your help. And I hope you have a good night's rest. I appreciate everything that you did for me today. <clears throat> I hate school. <laughs> Click bed tramming. <laughs> Please. Bye. Good night, honey. Love you. I turned off my mic. Okay.
Hello, quick bed tramming. Is that under prepare? No. Let's go ahead and just auto home it. See what happens. It's weird to see the bed go down instead of the hot end. For leveling, it goes down and then up. A little odd to see. I noticed the screw was not real greasy, so I'm going to go ahead and put some of this on there so when it comes down, it will automatically spread itself all over the place. Again, this stuff's amazing, guys. It's the uh, multi-purpose synthetic grease. Get it on Amazon. It's like seven dollars, eight dollars, something like that. Not very much. It's very good. Good night, any. All right. So I guess that's done since it's close. There's the auto home. I guess bed tramming is auto home is what it's talking about. Guess I'll auto home it in the bed leveling part. PTFE loop, huh? Hmm. Never thought about using it for that. That is right into that bed. So we need to move the Z axis, which I Thought was at zero already. It's just touching. I don't know why it's set at negative 3.8 already. Leads me to believe this had been used maybe I don't I don't know why it would be at negative 3.8 new out of the box doesn't make sense to me which I, I do know that they test their printers before they send them out a lot of times um, my SVO2 had been put together I could tell which because they put half of them together before you get them so it's not a bad thing really Okay, now I got the Z offset, which it, it, it reacts live. That's good. So, I like to see that. Instead of having to click it, wait for it to move to where you need to, check it and all that. Let me get a piece of paper here. I wish I had a post-it note, but I do not. I think post-it notes are the best for bed leveling. I did have a bunch of little pieces of paper, but I think I threw them away because I didn't realize why I had a bunch of little pieces of paper sitting around. So I just cut me off a little square. Now lay it under here. Go to bed leveling, Z offset, 
move it down. Which actually I could twist the screws a little bit to bring the bed up a little once it gets close. Which the way I normally do it is uh, screw them all the way down first. I got those silicone spacers on here. I went ahead and switched out the uh, yellow springs that came with it, which are just fine. Really, they are. I just felt like switching them out. Since I had them, I was going to put them on my SVO too, but I decided against it. Because I don't want to mess with the settings of it. It took me a while to calibrate that machine and get it working perfectly. But once it did, it stays perfectly working. So I'm really happy with that. All right, that's basically all the way down. So now what I'll do is I'll go like three or four whole turns backwards from all the way tight. About like that. This silicone almost looks evenly squished. You can look and see how squished it is to kind of get an idea too. That's one thing about it. You get a good visual. It looks about right. Now we'll mess with the Z offset. Which, no wonder they had it really low. Looks like it's going to be really low. There, it's starting to touch the paper. You want it to scratch the paper. You don't want it to stop the paper from moving. But you don't want it to barely touch it either. You want it to give it a good little scratch. See, I can still move it with one finger right there. And then eventually see how it starts to fold on you. That's too much. I'll back it off a little bit. Basically, when you can start moving it again, that should be good. So about right there. Let me go back down just to test. Go a little bit up from there. That should be good. Negative. Oh, this goes to the, I see this also goes to the uh, 10 hundred thousandth of a millimeter. This is not just going to the hundredths, to the point oh, whatever. This went to the point, you know, zero, zero for, um, I don't know if you guys could see that on the camera. But uh, when you go down here to the Z offset, on the SVO5, negative 0 0.3.420. If I was to go up one, I guess it is. I guess it just, I don't know why the hundred thousand or the thousands is there because that number actually doesn't change. So I guess it's pointless. I just looked down and saw that the number was there. Makes no sense. Whatever. Maybe all of these screen stuff's like that. I don't know. So now I'll go down to level bed. I don't know what fade height is. And I think that's going to auto level with the CR touch. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I do need to save the EEP ROM, the EEP ROM. But yeah, I will go store settings after I get a uh, a mesh set up for the bed. Oh, they've got the uh, nice. They got the high speed firmware. Looks like gyres probably. You see how this probe is not going up into the CR touch. The light's turning red, but the probe isn't actually retracting where you hear it click. That's the high speed version of the firmware. So there's a regular one where it goes, you'll hear it click and it'll go, but it'll drop it back down. You'll hear it click again. But the high speed version apparently comes stock with the SVO5, where as soon as it turns red, it doesn't need to take the magnet to go all the way up. It grabs that setting and then it go, it moves on. So you get a faster bed leveling, like a lot faster bed leveling. I like that because I had just put that on my uh, Ender 3. And you can do a five by five, you know, normal speed. I like that they got the high speed. See, now the probe just retracted all the way. It's done. So it's got the mesh. That's good. And then this is the part that Michael was talking about. We want to go to uh, probably configuration. Nope, not configuration. Prepare. Nope, not prepare. I'm not used to this menu. Maybe it's in bed leveling. There it is. This is what he was talking about. And then you want to go to store settings at the bottom there. There's the bed tramming I was looking for. Nope. What did I click? Um, yeah, store settings. I guess you gotta click. No, nope, guess not. I stored it. That ain't what I meant to click, but I wanted to go to bed tramming. Oh, that's it. Auto goes. I know what this is now. This is where it goes automatically to a point so you can uh, level your bed better. So that's a little too high. It's on the offset that I have it set to. Now I can get it a little better of a calibration. Spot on. Now to go to the next point. The next corner. I think it'll do each corner. So you can manually level. I've never heard it called bed tramming before. Now I have. And then we'll go ahead and let it uh, do another mesh. We'll get a more accurate bed leveling. This is probably the step that a lot of people miss. You need to do it manually before you let it make a mesh. I know you think, oh, but it's a CR touch. It's an auto bed leveler. Well, if you're having problems and it's not auto bed leveling properly, try doing this before you make your mesh to save for your prints. Maybe this is why it's not working. It's not easy just to set up a 3D printer. You know, it's not just level it and go. You get there's a lot of calibration and stuff that goes into play. Like Michael was talking about the E steps and all that stuff, which I don't normally set up either, unless I'm having problems with my prints. If I'm having a problem with the prints, then I'll go, you know, start calibrating these steps. You got to get your veneer calipers out. Uh, measure your filament. 
could do it with Proner Face. I don't know. That's what I usually use is Proner Face to uh, calibrate the E-steps because you can send G-code commands directly to the printer with it. Make it do whatever you want, basically, just by raw code. Oh, now it wants to do the middle, which I don't normally worry about the middle because there ain't nothing you can do about it. So really you should do each corner more than once, sometimes more than twice, more than three, until it gets to the point where it feels the same all the way around because see now this is loose right here. I don't feel the paper at all because when you move one corner, it changes the other. So when this goes down, this comes up. Or when this goes up, this goes down. You know, for every action, there's a reaction, basically, whenever you're doing your bed tramming. <laughs> New terminology for me. You normally want to keep the paper underneath it so you don't scratch the surface of your print bed. You see, that one's already there, pretty much. I don't, yeah, I didn't really need to change it. So that one's already done, which means we're getting closer to finishing this step. This one's a little tight. You can hear it scratching. So we want to uh, tighten it up a little bit. It's not scratching the paper so hard. And I'll change the corner because that makes grooves in the paper. Give you a false sense of feeling on the paper. There we go. Next point. And sometimes I'll switch my paper. See, it puts little scratches in it. And I feel like that makes it feel rougher than what it is when you try the next point. I forgot to get underneath this one, so. And it looks like it's touching the bed. I'm going to tighten it up, get my paper underneath it. When you tighten it counterclockwise, it goes higher. When you go clockwise, it gets lower. And as far as I've seen, this is the way it is on all three of my printers. I don't really do nothing with the middle because you can't. So we'll check this one again. See, it's, it's too loose again. Next point. I know this part sucks. A lot of people just want to skip it. But you can't. You got to get it right. You want it to be as even as possible, so when it comes to your mesh, it doesn't have to do much work to give you good results. We're almost there, though. It's not taking as long each time it goes around, as you can see now. It's basically, see, that one I don't have to touch. So it's probably going to be like that all the way around this time. The middle is raised up for some reason, but I'm not going to touch that. That one's pretty much good. That one's good. That one could go down slightly. Yep. That one could go down slightly. Now, if this corner is still good next time, we'll be good. So I barely adjusted them. I'm impressed with this fan on the front here. I really like it. Yeah, we're good. And it's got a duct that goes straight into the nozzle right there. That's, uh, that's some monster cooling right there. I like it a lot.
All right. Now we'll do our uh, mesh one more time. All right. Let me get this chipped out. See what kind of test prints I got on it. Yes, the first layer is uh, very, very important. Yeah, I saw it that uh, on my SVO2, it's touch screen, so you can just touch the corner you want it to check. So if you want to check the certain corner again, you can. Well, this is going to be interesting. What profile should I pick? I'm not sure what this file exactly is. A ringing tower. We'll do the XYZ cube. How about that? That's a good thing to test. I'd like to know what a ringing. Oh. It's an XYZ test. I see. But let me go do this on my PC. I don't have much stuff here on my laptop. It's a nice laptop. Republic of Gamers cost me a pretty penny. I just don't have anything for uh, 3D printing really on it. It's nice having a about a four thousand dollar computer sitting around uh, doing STLs. You know, I've got about three terabyte of space, so I can store every STL ever known to man. <laughs> it's a ridiculous, actually. So, what profile do we use with Cure? Um, curious. That part I do not know. Do you know, Michael? Which profile do we use? Does it come with one on the little SD card? That we load in the JSON files, software and drive. Sobel, Sobel has their own Cura now, huh? Hmm. Well, let me install Sobel's Cura then. It's interesting. Did not know they had one. They must have just made it. Cura 1.3, huh? Open up all kinds of files with it. That's always nice. You can see my stacks of filament over there in a little tray. It's overflowing. My wife used to keep her nail modeling kits in there and stuff. She's been evicted. She gets the bottom shelf. But I told her she might have to move soon out of there because I, got, I need more room for ABS now. So right now, I'm in, I know you can't see me on camera. I'm installing uh, Sobel's Cura. Um, see how it works. Run a test. I always trust what they give me because 
it's most likely what their engineers use and if it works for them it should work for me I didn't want the Sobel SVO one. Add a printer. Let's see. They do not have the SVO five in here. I see they put the FTDI drivers in here. That's smart. Well, I'm not sure what profile to use. I'm trying to find out. We'll ask Michael. He has the SP05. Ender 3, that's got the same size bed, yeah. All right, we can do that. I notice Sobel's Cura does not have the option to add any other printer. So, or maybe it's the custom FFF printer. Let's see what that looks like. No, definitely not it. All right, I can do that. Let's get into Cura going to use the we'll just add a printer I'll go to the ender 3 See height to three hundred. Four twenty at S one.
well, is the M420 going to work in Cura the same? I guess it would. It's the same flavor of G-code. Retraction. Fix this retraction, and then we'll be good to go. All right, now let's load up this file. This STL here. We'll just do the cube. X, Y, Z cube. The G code is already on there, so no need to slice. Just enter and print. They have fixed the issue on this one, apparently, of the printer being able to eat your card. That's nice. Couldn't remember if I bed leveled again after I did that, so I'm just going to run the bed level, save that, and then I'll run the G-code. Yeah, that's why I back it off about three turns in the beginning. Uh, when they're too loose, I feel like they move a lot. When they're compressed well, I feel like they stay a lot better. That's just my opinion. Um, just how I feel. I think these are a little too big for the glass. I'm not sure why they would send these. I think they're ridiculously too big. That eats up a lot of your print space on the bed. My V2 or uh, SVO2 did not come with ones this large. I have some spare smaller ones for glass. In my ender drawer. I believe anyway. Yes. These are the ones that you should use. I'll show them to you as soon as I get them both out. And this is the same size one that my uh, SVO2 has. These are the ones they should have sent with the glass. They're a lot smaller. And they won't eat up a lot of space. I found some on Amazon that you can twist the screw. And they're just like a little half circle. And then you can put them in like the corners and they barely take up any room. Um, I mean, it's very, very minimal in the corner. So I can't believe that bed level is already done. That's the high speed bed leveling that Gyres has in his firmware. I'm not sure if that's where they got it or not, but I like it. So I'm going to go back into the bed leveling and tell it to save the settings. I guess that means it's saved. It's an odd sound. Go to main. Got to put some filament in. Almost forgot. We got to put some filament in. 
I don't know what temperature this G code is set to. I'm not going to use this white because it's hard to see. I'm going to use some of my favorite filament. It melts real good. It sticks real good. It looks real good. I'm not sure who makes it. But uh, it prints really well. It's a dual color. I could have used some of that marble or something, but I'm just going to use this. Clip the end off of it here. 45 degree angle. I don't know if there's any settings I'm supposed to do on this uh, extruder, direct drive extruder. I've never used these before. So, if I look like a noob, it's because I am. I don't know how much you're supposed to tighten them, loosen them, whatever. I don't like this Bowden tube. I feel like it's got some resistance right there at this corner going in. I feel like this would be a better configuration. It just slides right in and out. Might have to make me something that comes off the back or something that just, I don't know, maybe comes off right here and holds this up in the air somehow. Or just bend it, maybe. Make it stay in the air. I like that better right there. All right, I don't know what this little knob does. I'm assuming it looks like you pull this forward, push it in. I have no clue what I'm doing here. Is that in? It looks like it. I don't know. We'll see. Like I said, I've never used a direct drive, so really have no clue what's going on here. Yeah, I feel like that would be better. I'm not really sure. I don't think anything goes here. It might be best just to mount the spool holder right here, maybe even sideways or something, so it just comes straight off the spool right into the extruder. Let's try to give this thing a run here. Print from media. Cube. Let's get her done. This would be the first thing I've printed with it. I hope it goes good. You know what, though? I need to stop. Go back. No, stop print. I need to um, go check my Z height again because after I did all that re-leveling, I want to make sure that it is where it should be. I always go through this little checklist in my head. No, auto home it. We'll check our Z height before we uh, start printing. Yeah, see, that's right up against. That would not have printed well.
Let's back this up so we can get a piece of paper underneath it. There we go. Yeah, see, that went down into the magnet. That wouldn't have been good. That would not have been good at all. I think that's gonna do her took a whole millimeter off of that now we'll get the print going see I almost messed up there we go there we go. I noticed the camera is messing up every now and then. I'm sorry. It's free software. I just tried to get real quick. Tell my. I was going to take it off and show you, but then realized grabbing it's probably making a lot of screeching noises, so I put it back. Heating up the bed first. Let me check to see what uh, bed temperature is going to be, or nozzle temperature. We can go ahead and just set it ourselves, I guess. Nope, it went to 187 automatically. I don't like that. I like to go to about 200, 205. 205 I found was works usually best with this uh, filament. So we'll go to 205. Gives you a percentage. Or no, is that a percentage sign? No, that's the degree sign. I see. I don't know. I kind of like this screen. It's not green and whatever other color. It's blue and white. So it's doesn't look as old school, you know, or as bad as the other ones. I don't mind the clicky button and stuff. And this interface doesn't bother me. It's very functional. And when you're standing to the side, it's like it's floating in midair. It's really cool looking. And I can't wait to print something cool to go on the back that looks nice. I'll make me a little case probably to go around this power supply, which is pretty well hidden behind this. It doesn't look bad at all. Unless you get to the side, then you can see it. But I don't know. I, I think people are being a little too judgmental on little things. I mean, you got to remember they tried to keep this as budget as possible if you're a cubic structure printer. For $299, from what I can see so far, it's built really well. Has a lot of good features. I mean, you get the direct drive. You get the CR Touch, which is the best bed leveling tool you can get, unless you're a mechanical engineer, a real big nerd, and you know how to create your own with those weird looking gadgets and stuff. Um, get the dual drive Y axis back here. The only flaw that I really see is this tube is kind of, I mean, I can see they're trying to make it easy to deal with as possible. I feel like the spool holder maybe should have been mounted up here, though, to go directly into it. Even if you just used a little Bowden tube to go up here, which I have Capricorn to replace this with. Somewhere over here. What I've done with it is another story. There it is. I think I got enough left, which I'll probably replace that. Uh, 
I should have wished I would have done that before I started printing, but I definitely have enough to put it on here. It slides better. It's got a little bit of a thinner diameter in it. So the filament fits in perfectly. I don't think I got this uh, direct drive set up properly. I, I, it doesn't look like it's going in. It's not. I was afraid of that. Do you push it in there more? I like the movement of it. It's really quiet. Very quiet. I've never heard one be so quiet in my life. But we got to figure out how... To get the that is extremely quiet. I can't believe how quiet this thing is. Holy cow. It says it's parking. I hit pause. Bed came down. Move into a park position, I guess. Says print pause. Purge more. Sure. Take that filament. Take it. Hmm. Not sure what I'm doing wrong here. I don't know how to load. I probably don't need to touch that until the steppers are turned off or whatever. Yeah, it's not taking the filament yet. All right, let's stop it. I've never used direct drive, so I have no idea what I'm doing here. But I'm willing to bet you This is not pressed in properly. You gotta pull this forward, it looks like. Push this in. There we go. That went in a lot more. I think that was the issue. So, let's try the print again. I think I got it because it went in to the gears and the top. I've seen it go down a little further. Take it away from here, Mr. SV05. I love this little turbo fan. I love it. And that duct is just pointing right at the front. Right at it. It's got two tiny bulky fans on the side of the extruder. Or no, I guess just got one for the hot end, most likely. It looks pretty well built in there. The duct almost looks 3D printed. It feels 3D printed. Ha! Huh. They may have 3D printed that duct. You can feel, you can hear it, layer lines in the ductwork there. Okay, yeah, I could tell from looking at it. There's that high speed uh, bed leveling. Come on, push them out. Not seeing any come out. It's 
Still not feeling it move. What's the heat at? The heat's at 200. I've seen somebody else having this problem on the Facebook group. I could not get the extruder to take the filament. And it looks like I'm having the same issue. But I'm going to figure it out, that's for sure. It's so quiet, you can't even hear it printing because it's not. What I got to do, loosen this thing up, pull it forward. It's going down in there. It's just not taking it. Oh, that's nice. Maybe it's just skipping. Maybe the filament's not thick enough or something. I don't know. It just broke while I was trying to push it in there. Never had that happen. So, I gotta take this tube off. May as well put the Capricorn on there, I guess. Since we're taking this off so we can get the filament out. Throw that over there. I really want to see this thing print. Really bad. Got my little tube cutters. We'll just take this. Line it up with this one. You can see the difference in the diameter. And the Capricorn's a little bit more slippery. Looks like I got just enough. I paid, I think, $12 for the name brand Capricorn PTFE tubing. And I got enough to put it on both lines, both extruders on the SVO2, the Ender 3, and now the SVO5. You get the cutters and some other tools and stuff with it, too. Looks like. Video died, did it? Oh, maybe I... <laughs> Let me fix that. If I can. I don't think it had a, a timer on the video. Here we go. I think it's going to come back up. My Google heard me, my phone heard me say H, Google, I guess, and it popped up with my Google Assistant and was trying to help me out but I didn't call for the AI's help so I don't know why I did that sorry about that 
Let me just get some zip ties in here, and I'll try to load this thing again. Hopefully, we'll get to see a print out of it. May have put a little too much tubing on there. Might have to shorten that up. I'll worry about it later. It's so it's more stiff, and I think it's gonna have an easier time sliding through there anyway. It does need to be shortened. I guess I may as well do that now. Well, I have everything here. Put one more zip tie on here. Having had this thing set up for a full day yet, already got upgraded upgrades on it. Haven't even printed with it yet. There we go. I'll try it again. That's the problem. I need to turn that little wheel. Get it down in there. That's what I did not do. See, I didn't know that trick. Now we're good. I think, I, I, I honestly think that's it now. I didn't know to put my finger on that little wheel and drive it forward. Yes, she did. Are you sure? Yep. Go, Spencer. I'm busy right now. And yes, she did. Oh, no. Where did that go? Oh, right here. Landed on the edge of the bed. Woo. All right, this is going to work. I have faith. I have faith. I never understood why it heats up the bed first before it does the filament. I guess so it doesn't ooze. The only problem I have with that is like on my uh, other printers, it does that and then it does the bed leveling right before and I feel like it doesn't need to be heated up while it's leveling the bed like it should wait. It should level and then heat it all up. That's just how I feel. I guess it don't work that way, but it should.
yes, the gear, I didn't know the gear in the middle, you could push it with your finger to feed it down more into the hot end. I was just pulling the little lever forward and shoving it as far as I could get it and then leaving it there. I think I've actually got it down towards the hot end now. And then I tightened up the little screw for tension. I think we should be good. I'm just going to go to tune and set it to 205 just because I like the 205. It's at 200, which is probably fine. But I just want to push buttons. So I'm going to put it to 205. Somebody told me it takes four minutes for it to heat up. I don't think it takes four minutes. Not at all. I think I've seen that in a YouTube video. I don't think he was correct. It doesn't seem like four minutes anyways. It's at 2.05. All right. Let's get going. And go. The nozzle flash is on here. I noticed when it's ready, it looks like. Yes, do your little Z probe, get to your zero, and let's get printing. And go. Get it. I think it's a little too high or too low. Tune. It's coming out. It's coming out. Maybe a little too much squish, though. There's the Z offset I can switch. Nah, it might be the perfect squish, actually. Might be the perfect squish. Let me get this cord off of here. So maybe you can see it a little bit. See that fan duct? That's 3D printed. You can really see it with the light on it. Kind of hard to get a good level. There we go. I can't really adjust the... There's that turbo fan kicking in. It's not so quiet anymore. Might have a little too much squish on there. Hard to tell. Got a little turbo bad boy right there. Come on, give us a peek. There we go. We can kind of see it from there. Can't really get a good angle. I think it might have a little too much squish. Hard to tell. If it does, it's barely too much. That first layer looked pretty good. Here was the original print line. I don't know what was in that nozzle. There was... That was in there. It's like maybe from where they tested it. That is looking immaculate though already. 
actually. I think I got it perfect. I am so excited. I don't know what speed this is set to. Um, here's the screen. You can see it's not the greenish whatever screens you see on these uh, this type of displays. I don't see a speed on there anywhere. Could probably do it in configuration maybe. No. Maybe in advanced settings. You can change all this stuff while it's printing is just amazing to me. We'll just leave it to do its thing. I don't want to mess it up. I might actually get me a camera for this one. It'd be great sitting on the back, the opposite side of the duct. Or even just maybe right here or something. I don't know. Maybe on the side. No, not that side. That side don't look good. Maybe like right here. Yeah, that's a good spot. It's actually very quiet, regardless of how loud you may think that fan is right now. The actual working of the stepper motors and stuff is quieter than my other machines, I believe. That's actually printing pretty quick, it looks like. It's already on like layer six or something. Five or six. It's actually pretty quick. I'll just set this camera back over here. And uh, I'll bring it and give you an update in a few minutes when it's about done. I know you can't really see anything right there. I can't believe how fast it's going. Uh, Mom did the dishes yesterday, that's who it was, actually. That's the dish that was from the morning whenever she had some uh, breakfast. Yeah, she didn't save any for us, but she made some bacon. She made sausage, egg, and, or sausage and bacon. She didn't have any egg. Holy smokes. This looks like it's using the uh, dry, gyroid infill or something. I don't know, that infill does not look familiar to me. I don't think I've ever used it, whatever it is. Look at that filament, though. Isn't that beautiful? There's no stringing. There's no pimples popping up. I wish I had a camera mount right here. This thing is just hauling ass. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. I 
look how beautiful that filament is. It's gray on the outside, and then it has some of that copper mixed in with it. What kind of infill is that? It looks like a squiggly lines or something. I don't know. I can't really set the phone on the corner here because these belts are here, and it'll just <laughs> go flying off. I'll make me a little holder that'll hold it just above the belt right here. Filling in takes 12 minutes. What are you printing? Or it's been printing for 12 minutes. Does it say time left? It just it says it's at 27%. So that's probably my time left. Yeah. It's scooting. It's crazy. Yeah, I think this cube usually takes me about 45 minutes on the other printers. What? It prints at 80, whereas the other ones print at 50 normally. I mean, you can do some calibrations and stuff and change that. But... That's so crazy. And when May was printing stuff, she it did. It looked like she was going at like fifty on hers. It didn't look like it was going fast. This thing is reared up. It's flying. Will you hold this for me for a second, so I can look at these chats. What they're saying. No, it's how long it's been going. It's uh, you think. Yeah, because as the percentage goes up, the minutes go up as well. Oh, uh, okay. Like, yeah, that's what they're saying. It counts up. Yeah. Uh, Brittany is in here. She said there's plenty of bacon left. Yeah, but did you cook it? Is it ready to be eaten? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never tried clipper or anything. Uh, Brittany, I'm printing a calibration cube. And yes, that plate is nice. Yes, a PID tuning. I've done that. I put on my Ender, I put uh, gyres 3x3 three three and did the PID tuning on there. I may need to do it on here. I think this is that's the firmware they have on here is gyres. I think they've just uh, modified it a little bit. But now I know how to load the extruder. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Michael. They probably did have it set up so it would uh, just print slow and guaranteed. <laughs> this thing is just, it's hauling ass. I, I love how fast it's going right now, and it's looking good, too. That's good filament, though, too. We got like four rolls of a half kilo each roll for uh, $40. So I'll hold it. You can read some of those comments if you want to read them to me, even if somebody says anything. This is my son, Spencer, by the way. Welcome to the stream, Spencer. Thank you. <laughs> He's been wanting to uh, do some stuff with 3D printing. He plays Oculus a lot. I told him he can print up some guns and stuff to put his controllers in. Mom said, I was giving her motion sickness. <laughs> this is the way I was holding it. And what I like about this printer also, there's not a lot of uh, jerking around. It's not a bed slinger. The bed just goes down and the gantry just moves back and forth a little bit. I might even be able to use it on my flimsy card table right next to the PC so I can hug it at night and stuff. I could run this at night while I'm sleeping. It's got just enough fan noise. I just can't get over this turbo fan. I love it. And here's my little sign that I made with the SVO2. Get a close-up of it. Especially that part. It actually had, uh, thank you, Mae Young in the top, but I forgot to inset it into the print. So it was just printed on top and it fell off. Whoops, sorry, Mae. 
she's part of Sobo staff though, so that counts. This thing is extremely quiet. I mean, except for that turbo fan going crazy, but already got the Capricorn they said tree. They printed, Michael said they printed a Elite Chopper for their future since the factory Elite Chopper died. Oh, yeah. That would be a good thing to use it for. Can you guys see this duct up underneath of the 3D printed one? It blows right up against the nozzle there. I'm sure you could probably get another fan or maybe a different extruder if you really needed to. I don't think you need to. This one seems to be uh, doing beautifully. The magnetic bed is nice too. You don't have to put any clips on there. You just grab the front little lip right there and peel it up. Getting it back down in the perfect spot is a little bit of a pain, but If anybody's tuning in, is this the SV05 Sobel? It only took me three hours to build it because I did it wrong three times. Michael is here to help me, though, get it right. I had to take stuff apart several times to get it properly. There's a model of Thingiverse that takes an acre battery pack, uses the stock strap, and is actually really comfortable. It works really well for uh, too long population one game nights. I think I've seen that on Thingiverse, actually. It's like a little holder, so you can put a battery pack on it. Yeah. Yep, there's some good mods and stuff out there. You can eat those little clips that were lost off of mine for a while until we found it underneath the couch eventually somewhere. Could have just printed those if I had a printer at that time. And I wouldn't have had to buy a whole new... They said they're going to link it. Good, you'll be able to, it should pop up in chat. That infill looks so good. Looks like I might need to do a little bit of tuning on it. I can see a little bit of layer lines. There's no shifting. Overall, I think it's looking pretty immaculate. If I was to get a mosaic palette, this would be the printer I'd put it on. I wonder how much airflow is actually coming out of that fan. Not much. You can't really feel it. Of course, those fans aren't made to put a high airflow, really. It's just direct. This did require a bit more build than most of their printers, but it wasn't terrible. And it's fairly simple, really. You might need another person just to kind of hold some stuff. Just pay close attention to the directions. The directions are not really in a good order, I don't think, but 
I only say that because in the build video that they made was different than what the directions, and I just figured they would go by the direction order if they made a video, which is fine. Have you have a look up underneath the bed? They said they printed three or four for friends and family, and they all really loved it, even without the battery, it feels better. Let's try it out. You can get thermal pads or something like that to go underneath beds. I've seen for fairly cheap. Helps keep the bed temperatures better, so stick, stuff will stick better. I feel like this magnetic surface has a really good surface, and if you keep it clean and take care of it, it should last you a good while. And if you can keep all these little pores from stuff staying in them, I think this is a really nice print surface. I would prefer it over the glass for sure. I might just order me some more of these magnetic surfaces. And when the print's done, I'll be able to fold it and pop it off instead of having to take a hammer and a spatula to the print to get it off the glass. I can use a cold glue stick to get it to stick. Of course, all new print surfaces usually stick pretty well. Anyway, we'll see how it we'll see how it prints after about two or three weeks of just burning it up. Michael said he thinks he's bought the screws off Amazon, but he this is way too big on the official job and it doesn't crack. Yeah, what he's talking about basically that strap you already have one. So you really don't need him. Uh, yeah, he's talking about that back headpiece and then putting the straps that came with it through the, that adapter to make it work the same way as like what you have. What? So it probably might even be a little bit more comfortable, but you got to worry about padding. There's no padding in it. You'd have to get something for padding to put it on your head. Yeah, that's, that's nice though. Yeah, but you see your set was only $25 which is fairly cheap yeah. considering I paid 45 they went down a lot probably people started 3d printing all the pieces so they're like eh, it ain't really worth <laughs> you know trying to sell it for that anymore if there is a layer shift it's my fault I've been resting this phone on the belt right here and forgot about it there's a belt right underneath where I've been holding the phone <laughs> I don't think there is, though. It looks like you can see the uh, seam on the corner over there a little bit, which is fine. I'd rather the seam all be in one corner than spread out because that's when you get little pimples and stuff all over the place. Still can't believe how fast this little cube is printing. Yeah, it's crazy. And when it gets done, we'll have a look at the cube. Myself, I was going to bed on time tonight, 9 30. Not happening. <laughs> oh well. Oh, Michael said you can print the padding with PPU or flexible PLA, but maybe because of his hair, he didn't feel like it made much of a difference worth knowing about it if you want to try it. Look at the hair on that pumpkin. <laughs> He's probably got enough. He could just throw it in the back there and be fine. Yeah. We do have TPU, though. And that's what I've been dying to try on this printer. I've tried it on the other ones. It's always come shooting out of the side of the extruder. With this one being direct drive, should probably have a lot better luck. We have a roll of it over there somewhere. Or maybe it's over there. I don't know where it's at. We got filament all over the damn place. Mom 
long said, can't wait to pinch it for Flex to be grown man. <laughs> what, she on her end or maybe? <laughs> <laughs> this is the printer I won, honey, from you making fun of me. Saying, what do you work for Sobel now or something? Another advertisement. Look what all the advertisements got me. This is a beautiful cubic structure printer. For free. For free. I'm in love with it. It's absolutely amazing. I've seen all the criticism people was typing about they didn't like how big the build volume was they don't realize it's only 299 it's definitely worth the 299 in my opinion so far anyway this power supply looks smaller than, i don't never had a mean well out of the package like out of the structure of it but for to me it looks skinnier or something But you can't see it if you're sitting in front of it, the printer really anyway, directly. It's it's hidden pretty well. I'm gonna put a case around it. Printer case for it. Yep. What color are we gonna make this printer? All these Z slots. I'm gonna be putting covers in them all, like I do have on the SVO2 and the Ender. The SVO2 is blue. The ender is neon green. Maybe we'll just make this one rainbow or something. Or gold. We'll print it all in gold. <laughs> you have to be surprised. <laughs> yeah. We'll mount my little plaque over there on the side right here. It's on the top. 97.3% done. Dang, that was fast. Let's see that top layer fill in. Oh, you didn't put the Z on the top or bottom? It automatically does it. Oh. Right oh, there it see. is. What? Did it indent it? No, it printed around it. It's printed a layer of Z around it. And then it's going to fill in all around it. Oh, I see. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. I see what you did there. <laughs> Michael said he really liked his Ender 5 Pros, but this is a better deal at 399 I mean, 299 kids outside of the community support since it's been out for a long time. This is a way better value for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, the Creality printers do have a lot more stuff out there about them. I just think you get better bang for your buck with the Solva lines. There's not a lot of support, which kind of sucks. But as people buy more and more of them, it, it'll grow. And they'll be able to afford better support teams. And Right now, I think they're killing it as far as the stuff they're building. I think some people just don't know what they're doing as far as setting it up. Even if they've been in it for years, everything's a little bit different with brands. I mean, every brand has their little problems or, you know, ways to fix things. And I think you just got to figure it out, find out what that, it, what that fix is. I mean, this one looks like it's printing straight out of the box. No calibration needed, really. There it is. Oh, wow. All right, now we'll get this cube off of this plate, have a look at it before I pull it off. Looks like it put a little bit of a skirt or a brim around it. Maybe that's elephant foot compensation, I don't know. I didn't set up the G-code for it. So, put this back right here. And we'll get this off of here. I don't even think we need to take this off, really. But we will bend it just to get the part off of it. It's still kind of stringing, oozing off of there. Because it's hot. 
So part of the bottom is still, I think maybe it was a little too low on the bottom there. So once it got done with that layer, the Y, you can see a little bit of layer lines. That's why I use this filament also. You can, that type of stuff really stands out. The bottom one looks like it was a little too low. Looks like it ripped off part of the bed or something. But it didn't. It's almost like cotton fiber-ish or something on the bottom. No, it's weird. Never seen a bottom like that. But if you look at the Z, you can see the shiny filament on the inside there. The bottom don't really matter, though. Um, this Y looks better than this Y over here. And then you have the X. X. And then it printed in gray on this side. And then on the top. That's why I think it was the, I probably should have raised it a little bit, and it would have looked a lot better on top. I love this filament. It just looks so amazing when it prints good. It also may have a little bit of moisture in it. It's been sitting out quite a while. So it was one of the first filament bundles we got. But uh, was you guys able to see this on the camera very well? Yeah, could you see it pretty good? Um, May, I believe that was maxed out at 80. I, it was the G code that came with the printer. So I can go boot it up and see what the settings say. I'll look at the G code on there. See what it says that it was set to, if it'll tell me. No, it won't tell me. It was whatever it was set to. It doesn't tell me what the settings were. But that looked really fast. It looked extremely fast to me. I'm going to see what the default settings are, which is probably just going to be 50.
sorry about that guys so here it is the uh, SV05 I've really enjoyed putting it together three times <laughs> I put it together wrong a couple of times but Michael was helping me I had these things backwards and all kinds of little issues that he helped me because you know how I am I put stuff together by pictures not by reading yeah. <laughs> he says good night good night Michael thanks for all the help thanks for being here the support enjoy your SV05 as I know I will you guys are going to be seeing lots and lots more prints from it even though this cube wasn't exactly perfect I know exactly how to fix it there's not really a lot of calibrating to go along with this thing it's got great cooling direct drive works great I did replace it with the Capricorn tube already um, which doesn't really matter much considering it's direct drive but get a better slide through there and everything so we're gonna be trying some TPU with it printing some phone cases probably maybe get mama a new pair of shoes <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for tuning in guys thank you Sobel staff we love the sp05 wife's already trying to steal it from me <laughs> so thank you for the giveaway thank you for everybody that tuned in uh, you guys have a good night and i look forward to sharing some more prints with you thank you Bye bye